the Hagman and Hagman Report for today. It's a terrific Tuesday edition. It's February 17th, 2015. I'm Doug Hagman, I think. Let me check. Yep, I'm Doug Hagman, the co-host, along with my son Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Folks, you're in for a great show tonight. Three hours of unbiased, uncensored news information and analysis. You're listening to the only show where the news is presented to you in 3D. And we look well beyond the headlines, the bylines, a fog of disinformation, misinformation, misdirection to bring you the news behind the news. If you can you tell I'm I'm struggling to to uh to breathe here, Joe. I, I just did a O. J. Simpson commercial. Uh, remember, remember those? Through the airports, you know, running into the studio. Um anyway. Wow. I can't believe I made it. <sighs> okay. Um for for the new listeners, we broadcast live each and every weeknight from eight to eleven PM Eastern. Our home base, of course, on the internet is Hagman and Hagman dot com. That's Hagman and Hagman dot com. Check it out. We're we're putting some new things on there. And uh tonight Hopefully, I can get everything that I've been promising up uh, to put up there. Um, just uh, so much going on in the news, so much going on in the uh, world today, folks. You just don't know where to turn, you know. It's, it it's really is. It, it's kind of crazy. But before we get into this, I just want to remind everyone that the portions of tonight's broadcast are brought to you courtesy the fine folks at naturebox.com. Uh, folks, if you haven't tried naturebox.com. If you haven't gotten your free trial yet for naturebox.com, if you haven't pulled the trigger on, you know, to, to purchase, to, or to, I'm sorry, to get your free trial of naturebox.com, do yourself a favor today. After tonight's show, go to hagmanhagman.com, click on the icon for naturebox. It's all the way down on the bottom. Or just go to naturebox.com slash CFP radio. Either way, it'll take you to our very special page there at naturebox.com where you can sign up for your free trial. Two dollars for shipping. That's all it is. But folks, do yourself a favor. Really try it out. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And and they're it's a they're great people, it's a great company, it's a great product. We love it. We use it. We're customers, consumers. That's naturebox.com slash CFP radio. Joe, welcome. Welcome to the studio. You're going to be, uh, folks, in case you haven't, in case you don't know this, uh, tomorrow I'm flying solo. Our guest, my guest tomorrow night, we're are going to be Tim Alberino and Steve, Steve Quill. Quill. Yeah, and just if I can jump in here, anybody who's hearing an echo, if you try to refresh the sound, uh, there are some people in chat heard an echo, refreshed the sound, and didn't have the echo. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's, uh, I don't think that's on our end. What's really interesting, Joe, is, is we have three three computers right now monitoring the um, internet, monitoring the show. And with, with each computer, there's a show clock attached, folks, to, the, to each computer system. We have three different times for the show. Now, that shouldn't be, because we're on the same network, the same... It's all, it's all interconnected. I'm not talking about your computer time. I'm talking about the countdown clock, the program clock. Pretty bizarre. So, anyway... Uh, but for those of you who don't know, uh, Joe's going to have some uh, surgery, and some say minor surgery. You know, no surgery is really minor, but he's going to have a uh, uh, some back surgery done. There's a he's got an issue with uh, with a, a, a mass pushing against his spine. It's benign. Uh, it's going to be removed, and uh, he'll know, be it's back pushing up. up against my spine, just on my oh, when you sit lower back area, when you yeah, sit, sit back against the chair. It but does. it's more. Uh, more close to the to the flesh when they're doing the the procedure, so um, it's not really the biggest part of it is. Um, and you, this is something you've had done in the, your past. Yeah. And uh, I'll be put under anesthesia, which you weren't. And you said if you had the option, you would be put. Well, under anesthesia. yeah, I had uh, I had a spinal done, and this is back what thirty years ago, when when I had my my back surgery done, and even to this day, I can feel where they put the. Yeah, numbing needle or whatever you call it, or you know. And I've uh, I've been put under before for other reasons. I've never had any problem with anesthesia, so I'm looking forward to the day off tomorrow. Nice relaxing day off. No, you know what? Uh, we're actually going to bring the headset to the hospital room and make you make you do from the. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you, you know, uh, to start tonight's show off, it's uh, I just want to address something here. Got a wonderful package from a listener and uh, let, me, let me see here if I can um, Robert 
and Leanne. I, I'm not going to obviously give the last name. We don't have their permission. Beautiful pictures of their children, shall we say, uh, four-legged uh, family members. But, you, you know, it's interesting, and here's why I mentioned this. I'm going to thank you so much, so much, so much uh, for your for your package Joan, I want to thank you so much for your package and a beautiful letter uh, and and beautiful pictures. But Robert and Leanne, um, Ryan and Lindsay, I hope I got this right. Let me just make sure uh, because the way – right, okay, there we go, Robert and Leanne. Okay, this is a great example of how you perceive things, your perception how people perceive things differently. You know, Joe, I've got I've got a we're not neither one of us are public speakers. We aren't trained as public speakers. We were trained in the uh art of what would you call it? Direct examination, asking questions, asking interview questions, being rather contentious, you know, that kind of stuff or being friendly, but getting answers, not inter- we're not radio people. But I have this habit of saying "Wow," quite a quite a bit, right? You know, and, and it's genuine too, because when I hear things like stuff Russ talks about or other others talk about, I say "Wow" a lot, and I mean it. So anyway, back to the package. Get this package. Beautiful letter. Nice. Uh, and I didn't read the letter before I opened the, I mean, the, the letter was in the package, but I didn't read it first. I looked at the contents of the package, and and here are, um, I got it right here. I brought it from, from the office. And uh, if if this was, actually, if this was on video, you could see this, but uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous. And I, and I sense, and I have to read the letter, but uh, uh, just gorgeous three letters. So I pull them out of the box, three wooden letters, and, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, why did somebody send us the letters MOM, M-O-M? I'm looking at this, and, and, I, and I, I thought, my goodness. Mom, you know, disconnect. And so I'm I'm going through this mentally. I'm thinking, okay, mom, 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 mom. So finally, Joe taps me on the shoulder, pushes me aside gently. And on the counter in, in our little office part of where we have the mail, turns the letters upside down or right side up. What does it spell? Wow. So, see, the reason I mentioned that is it's a lesson in perception. It's a lesson in, in, you know, you look at something and you're sure. Sometimes you're so sure. Hey, that's, you know, okay, you're looking at something. Hey, mom, turn it over, turn it upside down. It's wow. Wow. So to that, I say, not only thank you, but wow. So thank you, Joe, for correcting me on that. Yeah, no problem. And thank you, uh, Leanne and family. Yeah. Robert and Leanne, thank you so much. And we've got a lot of mail and uh, thank yous to to send out and uh, respond to. But uh, it's uh, always nice to, to get... You know things from the listeners, especially mail, uh, insight, thoughts on the show, on their personal experiences, on their lives, on how, uh, on their testimony. You know what things have inspired them or, or led them to a positive change in their life. Yeah. And uh, we get a lot of that through the mail, and it's uh, uh, just great. Josh Peck, actually, um, for those of you who remember, he's the author of Quantum Creation. He just released a new book, and he sent us a, a electronic copy. And we're going to schedule him to come on the show next week sometime. Um, but uh, look, at, let me find the, the name of his book um, here. And it is, uh, I think it's available now. And let me pull up the email here. 
<laughs> Josh yeah, reached out one to of us the greatest, today. Man. I mean, he's one of the best uh, presenters that I've ever heard on the topics of uh, quantum. I mean, I mean he Cherubim take... Chariots. Cherubim Chariots. Yes. Oh, I'm going to love to yeah. read that. And he sent that to us, and that's available now. Also, uh, this Friday, we're going to have a guest on named Dan Goodwin, evangelist Dan Goodwin. He wrote a book called called God's Final Jubilee, and we received that today. Uh, Mr. Goodwin, if you're listening, thank you. Um, he's going to be a speaker at the Orlando Prophecy Summit, prophecyinthenews.com, uh, that we will be speaking at and attending this uh, March 5th, 6th, and 7th. And that's Dan Goodwin, God's Final Jubilee. Uh, as I said, he sent us his book, and we got those today. And I really am uh, looking forward to the next couple of days. I'll be relaxing, and I'll be able to to get into this book and to Mr. Peck's book. So we want to thank you guys for, for that. We do have Stan Deo coming on tonight. Second hour. Hour number two. And we have a, a number of things that we want to ask him, and I'm sure a number of things he wants to get into tonight. As my dad said, tomorrow, Steve Quayle and Tim Alberino will be guests. Uh, as my dad will be flying solo Thursday, Jonathan Kahn will be on for hours two and three, author of The Harbinger and The Shemitah. Mm-hmm. And then Friday, we'll be on Pastor Paul Begley's show from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, and then we will have uh, Dan Goodwin on. So we got a full week. and uh, Sounds great. And I was on, just for the people, uh, the listeners, if you listen to the Power Hour, Joyce Riley. Uh, Ted yeah. Brewer was guest uh, this morning, so I was on for an hour this morning with with Ted. We, um, man, I just was I came unglued uh, during that hour. Uh, I don't know if it's archived anywhere, but I was just really I don't know what was going on. It, it must be the B complex, the combination of the B complex, the uh, um, the products that, that that Ted has provided, as well as the essential oils and. Um, Dietary changes, perhaps I don't know, but I just—it was like I felt like I was emulating Ted Brewer in terms of uh, talking. I was just talking uh, very quickly, and, and you know, we were, we were talking about different a number of different things, and talking about the um, the rise of the military state here in this country. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's getting bad. I mean. Um, <laughs> Oh, in this man. country, you know, uh, how about Libya yeah. and Syria? Um, I want to read it and start off with a headline tonight that just kind of made me uh, take a second look. Obama to allow moderate Syrian rebels to call in B-1B bombers for air support. You heard me right. Yeah. Moderate <laughs> Syrian rebels will be armed with Toyota uh, pickup trucks with mounted machine guns on the back and radios for calling in U.S. airstrikes by American B-1B bombers. Uh, so, according to the Wall Street Journal, the planes would drop a 500 to 2,000 pound guided bomb, a typical load for the B-1s that have operated in Afghanistan as well as Syria, using the B-1 sniper pod, which allows the aircraft to precisely target moving objects. The crew could target tanks, motorcycles, and other moving vehicles goes on to say um, some of the timelines by the U.S. plan is the first training sessions are to last between six and eight weeks. The training will focus on helping the rebel forces hold territory, counter Islamic State fighters, not to take on the Syrian army. Hmm. After that, the U.S. will consider introducing what it calls the new Syrian force into the battlefield of Syria, officials said. A team of four to six rebels will be given a Toyota high Lux pickup outfitted with a machine gun, communications gear, and global positioning system trackers enabling them to call in airstrikes. How do you the fight fighters will job? also be giving mortars. <laughs> will be giving mortars. The administration hasn't decided to provide the teams with more sophisticated anti-tank weapons, though. U.S. officials don't know whether American planes will be able to provide air support if the modern forces uh, train and get in a fight with non-Islamic state, but with forces loyal to the Syrian president because the U.S. isn't at war with Syria, U.S. military lawyers are wrestling with the question whether American warplanes would have legal authorization to strike Mr. Assad's forces, even to support a U.S.-trained rebel force. Aside from the legal issues, officials said, as a policy question, the White House hasn't given a green light to supporting the rebels if they get into battle with the Syrian military. Hmm. So, I mean, this goes on to talk about, you know... uh, 
This, this is uh, from what Dredge says. For one thing is certain, with the help of his new war hawks, Neo Confrens, Obama will quickly transform what is supposedly a war on ISIS, which, recall in August, started as an isolation humanitarian intervention that would promptly end into a true essence, undeclared war on the Syrian regime. Wow. Which I mean, means, to, to, I mean yeah. just think about that. Wow. I mean, in the coming weeks, uh, Mom. look forward to the <laughs> surge in false flag attacks to be blamed on the Assad regime, aiming to give Obama validation to expand the war against ISIS to include Syria's regime as well. And this is what we've been saying all along. ISIS was a repackaged threat to be able to go in and take out Assad and his re- his regime under the veil of a different agenda, um, completing the same goal. You know, um, yeah. The, all right. Uh, uh, how do you, uh, for, ladies and gentlemen, how do you even respond to something like this or, or discuss this in polite company? I mean, we're all adults here, but but but. Uh, but what do we ha- what's going on here where we are giving operational command and control to what are what are termed moderate rebels so in essence now just picture picture putin doing this to the united states i mean this is look at the bigger picture here we are propping up the anti-Assad rebels. Remember, in two thousand and twelve, in two thousand and thirteen, we told you this was going to this was going to happen. We told you what the goal was. The goal was to, to destabilize Syria and oust Assad. It's always been that way. It's always been that goal has always been there. Syria holds very extreme strategic importance to Russia and China. So, we are going in. And remember, this is what Benghazi was all about, or at least a large part of Benghazi. It was a weapons running operation. We told you this within 48 hours after Benghazi happened. We told you, number one, the compound there was not a consulate or embassy, but a CIA operation center. And number two, that operation center was under the direct guidance and control of elements within the executive branch as well as the Department of State meaning to say Obama and Clinton, and under the DOS or uh, along with the DOS, the CIA. This is what Benghazi was all about. It wasn't about a blind shake. Uh, it wasn't about some October surprise where the blind shake was going to get kid, uh, released in exchange for Stevens. That uh, Conversations to that effect came much later and started out of speculation and deflected from the real uh, core issue here. And, and that we can, we can devote an entire hour to that by itself, but that's not, that wasn't the issue. The issue was to run arms and even personnel up to Syria via uh, Turkey and Jordan. And Turkey is a key player in all of this as well. Bottom line here is this plan didn't, well, Putin expo- exposed the plan by um, having his proxies, Ansar al Sharia, and other terrorist groups hit the compound in Benghazi. And this goes back to July, uh, the July previous to the September 11th uh, hit when um, uh, attack when Red Crescent, where Iranian Red Crescent. Crescent workers were picked up off uh, near that Benghazi, or near that compound in Benghazi. It's all connected. But see the bottom line here: Obama, Clinton, that group, that cabal of criminal, that criminal element within the government, they are still in power. Still, play. it doesn't matter if Hillary's not there. It doesn't matter because the agenda is still there. Different faces, same agenda. And the agenda is to destabilize Syria. Russians not having any of it. When the when it failed initially, bang, uh, let's let's uh, set up Assad as being the bad guy in the chemical weapons attack. That was exposed. When that didn't take place, a third front was opened, or a different front was opened in Iraq. We told you about that via ISIS. We we the United States, the United Kingdom, Qatar, um, Saudi Arabia. Actually, yes. Yes, even the Saudis. It doesn't make sense 
in in the microcosm of the situation. But even some Arab countries were propping up ISIS that should be termed as sworn enemies. And ISIS now, don't forget ISIS, the head of ISIS, al-Baghdadi, in, uh, it was reported, this is reported back in June of 2014, June of last year, it was reported that when al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, was incarcerated at Camp Babuka, it, he was let go, of course, in, I think it was 2009, his famous words, I'll see you in New York. And, and that's meant to scare us, right? It's meant to it's meant to frighten us. Don't forget Al, Abu Omar al Baghdadi, folks. In 2007, he was captured. In 2007, he was killed. In 2009, he was arrested, having been released between 07 and 09, or at least these are the reports. And then in 2009, he was um, he was let go. And then in 2010, he was killed again. So this guy died twice, arrested several times, let go at least once, and says, we'll see you in New York. So imagine this. Joe, imagine you're, you're, a, um, you're the head of security, and uh, you're the head of security, and you've got the ability to keep anyone in, incarcerated for any length of time, all right, all for right. any reason. And here you go. you, you got one of the, allegedly or ostensibly, one of the most dangerous men in the world, Allegedly. Allegedly, right? And he looks at you and says, hey, see you in New York. What time? Well, yeah. So you just say, all right, have a nice trip, and God bless, pack his bag for him. Give Probably him, give him a, give uh, him his hookah and, and, you know. And a plane ticket. And a plane ticket. was bought with tax dollars, I imagine. Well, uh, and, and this is the whole thing behind ISIS, the Islamic State. It, this Let is some a, people out of uh, Guantanamo Bay to be top commanders uh, that you later put ransoms up for. I mean, <laughs> it is so intertwined with our intelligence agencies and the uh, CIA, like the CIA, into the British intelligence agencies. They know that we know that the CIA, and Mossad, the, sorry, yeah, Mossad, Saudi Arabia, uh, to uh, any real team of uh, intelligence, national intelligence agencies have been manipulating the mass media outlets. They've been manipulating the world events. They've been uh, setting up this uh, terrorist uh, enemy since before 9-11 and have been able to propagate it through till today. Right. And they do this uh, through the consolidation of, of, you know, the uh, television, the news, radio, entertainment, uh, the merger of all those and those six corporations that everybody talks about. Yep. The CIA has been able to uh, shape world events rather than watch them unfold and, and do something to fix them. And that's why you always hear, you know, shaping the the, the radio stations and our our local radio stations specifically the uh, Fox contributor. You know, shaping the news since whatever year they were founded. Really? Is it, when did it become shaping hmm. instead of that's a and good this point. Is the CIA and the intelligence agencies, MI5, Mossad, MK Ultra, uh, is a a plan of the uh, intelligence agencies that is uh, very public. Project Mockingbird. There's so many, um, and the the ones to attack. You know, to paint things up as uh, U.S. or or Cuban ships. We'll say for Northwoods Operation Northwoods was uh, a plan. Project Gladio. Be. Yeah, they they created a plan to uh, implement a false flag attack by painting up uh, planes as Cuban planes and, and crashing them into United States cities to go to to make an excuse to go to war with Cuba. They did this in the fifties. What do you think they're doing now? Oh, you're right. Well, and, and folks, don't forget in nineteen it was either nineteen eighty two or nineteen eighty three. Joe, I'm sure you would know this. Um, uh, Henry Kissinger spoke about, wrote about a hundred years war. And he was questioned about this. Uh, he was talking about a hundred years war. And, and this was in the context of keeping the military industrial complex going and uh, 
you know, how so through a hundred years war? Well, when and how would, you know, when would this start and what would ignite such a war? And, and his response was, when we ignite a war between the Sunnis and the Shiites. This is all part of the ISIS equation. This the groundwork for ISIS. People people like to think, and you hear this on CNN and and other news organizations, that uh, ISIS kind of just rose out of the blue. No, it didn't. It was planned. The infrastructure was there for, if not decades, for certainly for years. Some say ISIS started in 2006 as a splinter group from Al Qaeda. Which was uh, a U.S. creation. Exactly. You know. Admittedly. Yep. Um, but it, when you look at it from a larger perspective, um, what we're seeing here is the, uh, uh, well, you know what? There's a general. And you remember Susan Price, who, Gold Star Mother, who's appeared on our program, lost her son in Afghanistan, right? Absolutely. General Kimmett. Back in uh, April, I think it was in the Washington Post, April 10th, 2006, admitted that the U.S. military was pumping up the role of Zarqawi. This is reported on by Thomas E. Ricks, April 10th, 2006, quoting uh, General Kimmett. And he ref- this is referenced as the Zarqawi PSYOP program. Internal briefing documents showed that this was a Pentagon psy operation, psychological operation. Interesting, isn't it? When you start looking back and, and identifying the components. So you got Kissinger in 82 talking about laying the groundwork for what we're seeing. You got a military general, decorated general, uh, who some may believe he's responsible for the deaths of many um admitting to pumping up using psyops to pump up the role of of Zarqawi and Zarqawi was of course was the the main man behind the uh uh beheadings at that time Abu Musab al-Zarqawi and as we look at it as we look at Abu Omar al-Baghdadi you know, go through it from 2007 to 2010, and up to the point where he said, "We'll see you in New York." He was he was supposedly de- detained at Camp Buka from 04 to 09. Oh, uh, this you know, we are we are on the precipice of of a coming hell in this country. If you don't think so, and, and you, you see. People say, well, wait a minute, this is fear. Um, now, I'm not addressing the critics. I'm addressing the legitimate le- legitimate comments of, well, wait a minute, this is done by ISIS or by others to create fear here in the United States. I agree with that to a point. I agree with, you know, this see you in New York. It, it does strike fear in people, realistic fear, right? I mean, it, it's if you have somebody that, that looks at you, who has the, the means, motive, and opportunity to kill you, and they say, we're going to kill you. Do you take that seriously? Of course you do. You'd yeah. be foolish not to. So you've got you've got this, um, the head of ISIS saying, we'll see you in New York. Do you take that seriously? Of course you do. But it's meant to instill fear. Is that fear well-placed, or is that concern? Let's, let's forget about fear for a minute. Is that concern well-placed? I think it well, is. Let's see. You know, there's a new article that just came out across the wire here. U.S. officials admit concern over Syria's refugee effort. Top U.S. counterterrorism officials say they worry a potential terrorist could be hiding among refugees who are looking to come to the U.S. after escaping the brutal war in Syria. It's clearly a population concern. Director of National Counterterrorism Center Nicholas Rasmussen told the House Homeland Security Committee on Wednesday. He went even... Um, Chairman... Committee Chairman Mike McCall, Republican out of Texas, went further saying it would be a huge mistake to bring refugees from the conflict to the U.S., even as an estimated 4 million children, women, and men have been forced to flee Syria, and another 7 million have been displaced from their homes there, unable to leave. So it's 11 million people that have been affected, leaving their, having to leave their homes 
just in Syria alone. I, I refer back to the article by Gajandra Singh. We had referenced and talked about this many, many times. You know that Syria is not going to implode. You know it's going to explode. The Syria, the amount of the number of Syrian refugees that Western intelligence at the hands or under the direction of Barack Hussein Obama, Hillary Clinton, and every single person around those two, including the De- Department of Defense, which is our War Department, um, Department of State, State, I mentioned the executive branch, but also the Gang of Eight. The Gang of Eight, uh, this bipartisan Gang of Eight, as well as all of the leaders in Congress, they know about all of this. You, you see, this Joe, this is why, and, and I think I, I think it's important for people to understand. Do you think, for example, the Commission Trey Gowdy's Gowdy's Trey Gowdy's uh, House Select Committee on Benghazi? Do you think the truth will ever be known? No. 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 no, they can't allow it to be known because the bloody fingerprints of not just Obama and Clinton are on on this, but the Gang of Eight and every leader in Congress. You see, we're a captured operation. And, and here's something I want to, uh, if I may, and then I'm going to be quiet, Joe, and, and let you talk because you got to make up for time tomorrow, right? Uh, <laughs> not necessarily. Uh, here's something that... that Everyone should uh, really sit up and take note, I think. Anyway, we're looking at a situation here in the in – the tot- look at this to- totally in, in a big-picture kind of sense. Where we're at today with ISIS, Islam, and the coming storm here in this country, take a look at what's going on in Europe that's already here in the United States. It's just not being reported on. But more importantly, I think we have to recognize that the whole in this case is greater than the sum of its parts. Islam and ISIS are merely the conveyances in which a new world order will be ushered. You know, Islam, what is Islam, for example, in terms of what's its role in the uh, uh, the current well, what's his role in, in establishing the New World Order? Once again, this will be a tool or convey, uh, conveyance in order to bring in, to usher in the New World Order. It's going to well, cause chaos. Yeah, and we got to look at what is a, a New World Order. What does this look like? A book, International Community, A Goal for New World Order, written by George C. McGee, writes this. Is, uh, a concert of powers working together and a world of independent nations equal before the law. Between them provide the most fruitful guide to American policy, the U.S. will need to act in concert with other major powers in order to sustain a stable balance. Indeed, its citizens will demand that it do so, but it will also need to work with the U.N. and other international and intergovernmental organizations, showing respect for other sovereign states and legal rights and their legal rights. Only in extreme cases of emergency or humanitarian need will it be right to set aside the sovereignty of other states. A community of peaceable democracies reflects the aspiration and ideal. America must promote the adoption of liberal democratic values. Hmm. And that's just one quote uh, Mom. from his book. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And, and Control over international sales of arms. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they talk about this new world system. Uh, and interestingly enough, you know, the common uh, theme in the new world one world system is peace and security peace and stability but in the internet in the beginning uh, of his in the first chapter of his books he says we must identify types of international problems for which solutions could be undertaken find the means to apply ready and effective sanctions against those who threaten world peace and agree on procedures for the application of force in the event that all other measures fail Hmm. So through force comes the peace and security. Through force? Yes, through the application of force in the event that all other me- measures fail. And this pertains specifically, he mentions this after uh, talking about the balance of power after the um, USSR had been uh, the, in the communist system fell and the United States emerged as a true world power. He mentions creating a Euro- European community and solving the Arab-Israeli dispute 
then goes on to mention doing this so uh, they'll have to have ready and effective sanctions against those who threaten world peace mm. and agree on procedures for the application of force in the event that these measures fail. Wow. Uh, well, you know, uh, on, on on the power hour this morning, I was I, I made reference to Islam and, and the it, it's what it will be here in this country, and why it was really why it was introduced and and uh, or why it was allowed to uh, become such a force in such a short amount of time. And, and as I mentioned, it's a tool for exactly what Joe just described. But I will say this: that people need to understand. Uh, and our listeners understand this. Most most of uh, you all understand this. That Islam, Islam is not, and should not be, a religion or, or, or uh, identified as a religion. It should not be. Con- it's not just a religion. Well, hold on a second. Eric Holder says, you know, I don't want to worry too much about the terminology, debating on on the Islamic extremism issue. He says, I think people need to actually think about what, actually think about that and think about really. Are we having this conversation about words as opposed to what our actions ought to be in reference to calling this Islamic extremism? Or um, this is what Holder says. Attorney General Eric Holder Tuesday dismissed uh, conservative criticisms of the Obama administration who have accused the president of downplaying the religious leanings of violent extremism. We spend more time talking about what to, uh, what do you call it as opposed to what do you do about it, Holder said. If Fox didn't talk about it this way, we would, they would have nothing else to talk about, it would seem to me. Radical Islam, Islamic extremism, you know. I'm not sure an awful lot is gained by saying that. Really? Conservatives have criticized the administration for what they say is shying away from mentioning Islam when talking about recent terrorist attacks. President Obama has said those labels alienate the vast majority of Muslims who share the honor, or the, I'm sorry, who share in the horror at terrorism and dismiss the self-proclaimed religious motivation of groups like ISIS. Speaking at the National Press Club, Holder dismissed the debate itself as a sideshow. It doesn't have to have any impact on our military posture. It doesn't have any impact on what we call it on the policies that we put in place. He said, what we have to do is not defined by the terms that we use, but by the facts on the ground. So I don't worry an awful lot about the terminology, the appropriate terminology, or what that ought to be. I think that people need to active, actually think that and think about really what we uh, are having this conversation about words as opposed to what our actions ought to be. Interesting. Interesting Interesting approach to this. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. L- let me ask you this, Joe. I mean, if, if, if you were going to um, c- consider that Eric Holder obviously has an agenda, and that agenda is to cover uh, the, the true nature. Y- you see, ISIS is Islam. ISIS, ISIS is really, truly Islam is an example, and, and people will argue this intellectually um, and say, no, it's not. It's an aberration. But, but no, folks, it is, it, ISIS is um, based on 1,400 years of past behavior is truly Islam. And, and, here's, and here's where the disconnect is. If you look at, uh, if you look at Islam real quick here, um, Islam is it really comprised of three individual yet closely integrated systems. You've got your religious, political, and military systems. The religious aspect, people are you know, are immigrating here into the coming into the United States and practicing or seeking protection, using our, our constitution to seek protection for their religious freedom. The numbers are, uh, of, of Muslims are on the, dramatically on the rise because of our immigration or lack of immigration policies and enforcement. Then you've got the political aspect. You've got to increase your political presence inside the country in which you want to conquer. And then you've got your military part, which comes a little bit later when you've got the demographics down and you're covered through the uh, Constitution of the United States where you're allowed to practice freely your religious part of the of the uh, Islam. And now you can exercise your military component of Islam and therefore eliminate all non-Muslims. And you might think that this is hyperbole, this is, you know, it's, it's all BS, but look, past behavior is the best indicator of future performance. 
we've got 1,400 years of past behavior, of behavioral examples. Look at the Byzantine Empire, you know, 550 after the fall of Rome. Of course, that was prior to, uh, you know, Islam being uh, created or uh, being founded, but ultimately found or uh, uh, fell to uh, Muslims, uh, the Persian Empire, Iran today. Look at it. In the in the sense of the Byzantine West versus the Persian East in the context of the Cold War, so when we when we look at Islam uh, as well, well, very quickly, uh, if if you were a follower of of Islam, who would you look to to emulate? Who would you look to as the best example of a, a good Muslim? The answer is Muhammad. Correct. Well, okay, because who do Christians look look at as the best example to emulate? Jesus, right? That, Hopefully, uh, well, if yeah. they're not Christian, if, uh, that's okay. not the case. Well, it, when you look at the life of Muhammad, born in 570 and died in 632, and, and of course, upon his death, is, is that uh, that created the Sunni versus a Shia rift. But but having said all that, in between there, working backwards from 632, at 630 you've got the conquest of Mecca, 628 the Battle of Kaibar, the six, at 627 the Battle of the Trench, 624 the Battle of uh, Badra, 622 is when Muhammad fled from Mecca to Medina. You've got this ruling this this abhorrent uh, conquering by Islam and the killing. So um, <laughs> adherents or, or the Muslims want to be more like Muhammad. Well, and one might say, well, wait a minute, this is not based by, uh, backed up by any scripture or any type of uh, uh, anything from the Quran, because the Quran you will hear all the time, care, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Well, look, Islam is a peaceful religion. Well, Surah 5, verse 17. Infidels is in, I mean, they're defined, if you look at uh, Surah 5, 17, infidels are defined as those who declare God is the Christ, the Son of Mary. That's the definition of an infidel. So, an infidel, folks, is anybody who believes in Jesus as the Son of God. Surah 573, infidels are those who say God is one of three in the Trinity. Surah 9, 123, make war on the infidels who dwell around you. Surah 4, 101, the infidels are your sworn enemies. Surah 47, verse 4, when you meet the infidels on the battlefield, strike off their heads. Gee, I wonder where they got the beheading idea today. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. So uh, compare, for example, uh, and I can go back to just briefly. If you look at the, if you look at how Islam came into being, well, it's a, it's a combination of, uh, and, and, and folks, you know this, uh, uh, Zoroastrian, the religion of Persia, the uh, uh, Manichaeism which really began two centuries before Islam. Judaism, the Talmud and the Mishnah, oral traditions and, and Christianity. But Christianity, uh, Muhammad being introduced to Christianity, he was introduced through apocryphal and heretical sources, apocryphal texts and heretical sources. So, for example, like the infancy Gospel of uh, Thomas, which is not part of the Bible, yet Islam does rely heavily on this particular book, once again, the emphasis Gospel of Thomas, and if you want an idea of what is contained therein, that contains stories of Jesus speaking from the cradle and making with his hands birds out of clay and then clapping, and they all flew away. All these birds flew away that he made out of clay. You see, that is not a scripturally sound doctrine, but this is what Muhammad reportedly, well, not reportedly, by his by his uh, uh, scribe, had uh, taken from Christianity. It's heretical. It's confusion over the nature of Jesus, combining the religions I mentioned, or the, the belief systems I mentioned. And there are three sources of literature of extreme importance in 
in Islam. It's not just the Quran. The, the Quran represents the private revelations to Muhammad, but you've got the Hadith, the Hadith, which are stories remembered about Muhammad by his wives and warriors. And then you've got the Surat, which is the biography of Muhammad. And that was written about 100 years after his death. Those are the three sources of literature in Islam. And we talked about this yesterday with Russ, uh, accounts where Muhammad would describe, or at least his scribe would and has uh, documented that Muhammad was ins- uh, was inspired uh, by sounds of, for example, sounds of buzzing bees near his face. Who wrote that? Umar Khattab. Um, while others times he felt this treme- tremendous headache. Many times it seemed to his friends that he swooned and looked drunk and intoxicated. We talked about this yesterday with Russ Dizdar. So all of this, uh, again, this we have to recognize that Islam is not just a religion and should not be considered a religion, that it is a religious system. It's actually a, a political and military system masquerading as a religious system. And as such, we should, we should treat mosques in this country much different than churches or temples, Jewish temples. Why? Because it is at these locations where their military and plans of conquest of the country, this country, are being created. Look at look at the, the record between Jesus and Muhammad. Answer these yes or no questions. Jesus or Muhammad? Did Jesus kill anyone? No. Muhammad? Yes. Did Jesus lead any armies while during his ministry? No. Muhammad? Yes. Did Jesus own any slaves? No. Muhammad, yes. Did Jesus have wives, multiple wives, one or two or three? Well, or... You just said, did Jesus have wives? Right. You no. Said, you say no. Okay. There you go. No. You Muhammad no, had. I think, unless I misheard you, I apologize. Yeah, no problem. Did, did he Did he torture? <laughs> yes. Muhammad, not Jesus. Did he did, did Verbal he torture lie? through offense of the truth in today's political... What does, they, what does Dave Dobmeyer say? What, what's his big big quote? When, like? when the uh, truth becomes hate speech. That's as much as I know. Well, yeah, what Dave Dobmeyer says. truth has become hate speech. Uh, those who hate truth consider truth hate speech. Yes, there you go. And think about so that. true. I mean, so, so true. So uh, many people... Uh, especially if you're if you're a Muslim listening to this, and, and I know I'm going to get emails about this show, but I think it needs to be said. Many Muslims will, will consider this hate speech. It's not hate speech. This is intellectual discussion discussion identifying facts right from the source, right from the books of Islam, and, and they're not taken out of context. And if you want behavioral examples, look at the last 1,400 years. And I'll close with this: we. We have see where the problem is when you 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 look at uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama is Islamic by, I mean that's his his upbringing is is a, is a Muslim, but he also has uh, an affinity, uh, an allegiance to the to, to, to Islam. He's stated it as such, but also. I found a very interesting interview on, on on the internet. It is an interview with someone who was very close to, in fact, uh, was very close to Al Baghdadi, the head of ISIS. I'm, I'm working right now to authenticate the interview and authentic- and to have it translated. It it, it was translated with it, the the interview is done in Arabic with English subtitles. But I'm trying to working to have it uh, authenticated. But the but the bottom line with this is, he uh, he was talking about ISIS and about the creation of ISIS and how it came to be, and and said that and we can document this as well, where Obama had given fifty billion or fifty million dollars to uh, uh, to Egypt 
on behalf of the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama had communicated through an intermediary to support the Muslim Brotherhood operation in Egypt. It wasn't just uh, it wasn't just the State Department. It was it was at the executive level, and you might think, well, that's his prerogative as the chief executive. No, not not in the context in which it was done. But but think about this. Um, this has all been done with the knowledge and consent of not just Obama and the people around him, but those predecessors before him, including George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Why? Why? What is the objective? The objective is to advance a new world order. Without looking at it through that lens, it wouldn't make sense. And we have people now within our government. You know about all of the infiltration, Muslim infiltration within our government. That's to advance a larger goal. Look at Keith Ellison, the, the first congressman ever to take the oath of office on a Quran. In case you're wondering, or in case you didn't catch years ago when he was sworn in what he said I'll tell you what he said and listen to it through the context in which I just set up here I set it up he said this you've got to have faith in Allah and you got to stand up and be a real muslim if we believe in Allah if we turn to the Quran for guidance we'll find an answer to the questions we have well, let me ask you, Mr. Ellison, what questions are those? What answers are you seeking? Certainly not the answers, either constitutional or Christian. And the quote of the day on our website is, uh, or I think it might have been yesterday, but it has been determined by the uh, Supreme Court, that this is, in fact, a Christian nation. America is a Christian nation, period. So, Obama, the renegade in chief, sorry, you're wrong. It's not a diverse nation. And the tolerance should be narrow in terms of who we allow in, because you see, who we have allowed in are the very people who are working to bring us down. And we have seen, and you, all you need to do is study history. The conquering of Mecca. The conquering of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. The conquering of Damascus, St. John Church. The conquering of Hebron, Cave of Patriarchs. The conquering of Constantinople, St. Sophia. Conquering of Athens. The conquering of Spain. The conquering of India. The, the drive by the Muslims to drive the population from Algiers. And obviously, most recently, the conquering of New York City. Because out of all the places I mentioned, places of Islamic worship, mosques have been, have been erected, and the attack on New York City is no different. So what, um, what we're looking at here is global conquest, Political military systems here in America, operational in America, softening the ground, preparing for the ISIS infiltration, and preparing for the chaos that's coming. So, when ISIS says, see you in New York, are we talking about fear? I mean, should is this just promotion of fear? No. No, it's not. But understand, it it's not just the Muslims, or it's not the Muslims by their by their own initiatives, by their own hands, they're tools of the New World Order. I hope that makes sense. So are, if you see, for example, a Jewish synagogue being blown to bits by a Muslim, is that a false flag? Well, no. I mean, can you say, well, did a Muslim, would, you know, did a Muslim blow it up? Hey, probably, because of the predisposition toward that, that objective. But who's funding? Who is providing the means and opportunity to allow or to facilitate that type of operation? You call it a false flag operation. By definition, I suppose it could be considered as such. Is it? Did it happen? 
you know, would it ha- if it does happen as an example, does that mean it, 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 it didn't happen? Of course not. Did it happen at the hands of a Muslim? If in fact, you know, it did? Yes, of course. But do you stop? Do you stop and say, do you stop at that point and blame Islam? Only Islam. No. You look further. You you gotta you gotta expand the search to to get all of the players here. Because behind those actors, behind those perpetrators, with the bloody fingerprints in charge who are pushing for a new world order. Does that make sense, Joe? Or did I just go fall off, you know? No, that made sense. Okay. Um just some things I would um change or, or you know, you talked about the nine eleven attacks. Um, and those being propagated by uh, Islamic extremists, I think that's yet to be determined. That's what was presented to us. Well, r- right. And, and folks, uh, look, I understand. I, I just, I, I guess, you would not blame, for example, it would be out of the norm to blame a uh, um, a group of Amish, and this is to the extreme, absurd to the extreme, but you wouldn't. Uh, blame a group of Amish farmers for the attacks of 9-11 and have it believable. Right. But when you blame um, or even uh, have Muslims take part in, in such attacks, is it believable? Is there is it plausible? Of course it is. Because of their uh, predisposition and their past 1,400 years of past behavior. So of course it is. You've got to make it presentable to the people, palatable and believable. So the Muslims out there, having had 1,400 years predisposed toward this type of operational, uh, uh, this type of operation, of course you've got a ready-made perpetrator right there. Because you wouldn't, if you're going to hire a hitman, you wouldn't go to your your Baptist minister. You would go to to those most pre- predisposed killing people, right? If you're a minister, so. I guess the whole thing. So you're correct in that for trying that. But regardless, it was their victory in the eyes of Muslims with respect to 9/11, and especially at the at Ground Zero in New York City. Certainly, because they have established their mosque there at Ground Zero. Should have never allowed that to happen, but they did. And, and I and I went back and went through the major conquests there by Islam. From Mecca to Algiers, didn't I? I mean, obviously, in every one of those locations, Mecca, Jerusalem, Damascus, Hebron, Constantinople, Athens, Spain, India, Algiers. What do we find there? We find Islamic strongholds in in, in the form of mosques. Does that mean that they acted alone? Of course not. Of course not. In New York City? In elsewhere? No, of course not. Go back to the Hundred Years' War as referenced by Kissinger. Go back to the statements made by Brzezinski, the PNAC document, and others. What are we seeing here? We're seeing something much bigger on a much bigger scale. Does it involve Muslims? Absolutely it involves Muslims. So, as a tool. So, there, there you have it. All right, we're going to take our top of the hour break. We're ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this Tuesday, February 17th, 2015, of the Hagman and Hagman Report. We are joined, as we are every Tuesday, by Mr. Stan Deo. His website is standeo.com. Bookmark that site for the latest uh, updates and news about his interviews and upcoming shows, presentations, speaking engagements, and more. Stan, it's great to have you back on the show. Good to be back, guys. Uh had a uh, really nice uh, holiday, I guess it was. Um, surprise week of, uh, you know, being an old guy, the vintage dude. <laughs> um, we, we hear... Have you, have and, you seen the... Well, well we, we stand, stand if I can... It, no, no problem. We we hear that that you actually had... Um, uh, uh, and folks, it was Stan's birthday last week, and he had... Uh, I mean, we all should uh, join him, and I hope you... I hope people who have the opportunity to wish him a happy birthday. But you had quite a day, quite a quite a time, didn't you? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I haven't had all my four sons together, you know, here uh, for 
you know, forever, actually. And uh, this is the first time, and Holly uh, and the boys planned a um, surprise 70th birthday for me. And I tell you what, they've been working on it for months, apparently, and I never knew a thing was going on. I kept hearing little whispers behind the scenes, you know, at the party. Uh, you know, while we were hiding in closets and we'd shut off in the middle sentence because you were coming around a corner and the neighbors all knew. I didn't know. All the family and their families knew. And if you look at my show images page up the top row there, uh, you see the first picture, the, the, the first boy to arrive, uh, well, it was Nathan and Josh, but he, Nathan had the camera uh, on his phone. And you see this Valentine wreath with this stunned mullet looking out through that's me, the stunned mullet. And uh, the reason I was really so shocked to see him was because uh, two days before, in, in the evening, about a day and a half before, I guess, I'd been talking to him and his wife and uh, uh, his uh, youngest daughter. They were going to take her out for the day at the um, water park or to a shopping mall, etc. She's only about you know uh, three three years old or so. But anyway, um, we were talking over Skype, and uh, and he's in Australia, you know, twelve thousand miles away. And we finished up our discussion, and uh, you know, day and a half later. Here's that sucker right there on the front door, and I'm thinking, <laughs> how did that happen? I was just talking to him. <laughs> oh, well, he got me, and uh, the uh, they came on in, and you know, I, I had a couple more boys over, one in Texas, one in Louisiana, and I figured they'd be kind of like busy. But I, I said to Holly, I said, did you invite all the boys over here? She said, well, I did, but the other two couldn't come because of business. I said, well, okay, I understand that, you know, and um, so. We were sitting there talking a bit, and uh, another knock comes on the door. And this time, it's uh, the the, the uh, one of the two that weren't there yet, and uh, from Texas. And I didn't immediately recognize there was this guy holding up this map or something in front of his face, and all I could see was a, a baseball cap or something on top of the, of the map. And this guy makes a bad pronunciation and says, uh, "Can you can you tell me where I can find this Pueblo City?" And I'm thinking, "I know that voice. That's great." So I pulled that map out. Get in here, boy. And so he came on in, and uh, we. Uh, I, I, then I heard that the other one couldn't make it, so we had dinner and a uh, bunch of chatter and whatever, and uh, getting ready for the dessert course. And they decided to call up the other boy and say hi to him on the phone. So we did, and I talked to him, and he was telling me how he's having to move his office and move furniture, and so you know, he couldn't get over it. I said, "Well, I understand." Anyway. Five minutes later, we're outside on the deck, you know, in the evening there, uh, uh, you know, by the, the chimney of fireplace, and I see this huge set of bright lights coming down, you know, the side of the house, so, you know, it, it, we were where we couldn't see the driveway, and uh, he'd come over in a big truck, and it was the lights, and it was the fourth boy coming in, so um, it was a gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I was absolutely surprised by all of them, and... Uh, we we had fun uh, for for days actually. They all camped out in various rooms and corners of the house. We we made room for uh, the boys and for um, uh, Greg's uh, uh, wife and the, uh, the two boys there. Or, well, one boy, and one girl there. But um, so we had a full house, absolutely full house. And uh, it's probably the it is the best birthday uh, I've had in my life. It was just really great to see everybody together there and having such a great time. That's uh, wonderful. As you can see, yeah, as you yeah. can see there the uh, on the the website uh, on the top of the show images page, uh, I went out and, and did a selfie out there with the mountains in the background with some of the balloons they had there. The theme was the vintage dude, the man, the myth, and the legend. So <laughs> I posed for that like you know Jesse James would or something, you know, <laughs> or, or, or Barack Obama. We did have fun. Oh my goodness! Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh -huh. but you can read all about it on on the on the homepage. Holly uh, put up the thing, told the story, and all that. But uh, that's why I wasn't on last week. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. See, they got totally slack. Uh, wow. Well, you, you, you know, party. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Stan. Joe and I knew about it. We knew about it. Oh, did and, you? Uh, oh, yeah, we did. Uh, Holly had said, "Look, you know." Um, it, it, you know, we're having this big surprise party. Stan doesn't know anything about it, and uh, uh, yeah, we knew about what was what was being planned and what was coming, and we were so excited for you. We really were, and um, wow, it's just it's just great, man. 
none of you guys let it, let it slip. I, I tell you what, they, they, she was probably doing payback for what I did her her 60th birthday surprise uh, last year. And well, uh, you know, one of our dinner parties, we all set it up behind the scenes, but it was nothing like this. I, I, don't, bl- she, I don't believe she got me in this, and I'll never top it. Well, I, I don't believe she's 60. I don't believe you're 70. Folks, go, go to standale.com. Look at the images page, show images page, and what a beautiful family. What a, and this is, you know, Stan, isn't that what it's all about? I mean, really, when it, at the end of the day, it's, this is what it's all about. Yep. Yep, of course it is. Wow. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really good. I, but we, uh, The two boys from Australia, uh, one of them had seen snow uh, before, but the other one hadn't. Uh, they, so they, I got them together and uh, drove them up into the mountains, up into uh, Beela Valley. And uh, found a nice big patch of snow we'd had up there, and and uh, then filmed them having a snowball fight. And you know they didn't do anything by halves. Uh, you know you and I'd probably roll up a little snowball the size of a baseball or softball and chunk it at each other. But they were they were picking up chunks of snow and packing it. It might have been like uh, eight inches in diameter. I mean <laughs> they were getting serious about it. <laughs> we got that all film. Uh, <laughs> medicine oh, yes, balls yeah. absolutely well we do like that uh, animated uh, uh yeah uh the river dance at the oh, bottom oh. uh that's er oh, near the bottom. we're still working on that the, the boy the boys are helping me do that because that was just the first one that, that i did real quick but um because holly was taking the pictures uh, with the camera that you know you put it on uh multiple photos so it'll take one bang 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 like that before you can even blink an eye and so there were a bunch of little runs like that where we were either turning our heads left and right or moving our hands funny or something. It's absolute hysterical. I mean, just anyway, we're we're putting it all together. And Jeff, uh, one of the four boys, is going to put um, put it to music, probably river dance and some other bits and pieces. Uh, it looks more like the Folie Boucher to me, uh, Boucher to me, but uh, you know, like the line dance. But anyway, it. Uh, <laughs> We we laughed so hard our jaws hurt when we started flicking through those things and rocking them back and forth to look at the picture one picture two picture three type things and uh, it just looked like an old timey um, you know color but black and white silent film it just absolutely a, a hoot <laughs> oh man well I'm, we're 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 so glad and we're so happy and uh, it couldn't have happened to a to a nicer gentleman. Um, Celebrating, well, uh, you guys. my goodness, and, and a nicer family. What a, what a great looking family you have! And God bless you and Holly and, well, and your you. sons and everyone. And, and thank you. And we got a lot of emails just now, uh, just saying, make sure you wish uh, Stan a happy birthday. So there you go. Well, I got thirty five of them from your listeners uh, over the last, uh, well, I guess four days or so. I've saved them, and they haven't been able to answer them all, but. Um, between you and Steve Quayle's show, uh, I didn't even know you'd said I had a birthday on there, and people were sending me happy birthday stuff. I think, well, how'd that guy know? And how'd that lady know? And, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, absolutely. Thank you a lot, guys out there that are listening that uh, send in those happy birthdays. I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you more. I mean, it's just you're, you're just a, 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 a tremendous man. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, where do you want to start off tonight, Stan? I see you got some interesting things on your show images page, aside from the the birthday celebration and the the vintage dude button. The New Madrid uh, fault <laughs> region uh, has really caught my eye. We have questions about Yellowstone and and some other things going on. Um, where do you want to start tonight? Well, I think the the, the thing that's on foremost on Holly's mind and mine has been for days now has been the increase in activity by ISIS in the Middle East. They've um, virtually surrounded um, the top half of Africa, uh, you know, started running the, the nations around there, so basically centered around Tanzania and um, uh, Kenya and that area, plus over in the Middle East. And we've been watching this guy over in Iraq, who is an, an Iranian general, I, I've mentioned him before, but um, ISIS is becoming, you know, so much of a thorn in the side of everyone that, to me, it looks like uh, ISIS is being set up to take the fall to bring into place the great military genius of the of the time, the Antichrist. And I believe that Kasim Soleimani, if he's if General Soleimani from Iran, who's who's fighting him and, and winning in Iraq and a couple other places, if he's not the Antichrist, 
boy, he's closer than anybody I've seen in a long time. Uh, he just, he's got the right name. He's a military genius. People are saying, you know, who can beat him? I mean, even the United States couldn't beat him in Iraq when he was over there fighting for the Iraqis. So we're, we're just seeing that, that this is coming to a head this year and soon so that ISIS gets overthrown by a consortium of, of Arab um, Muslim nations under the leadership, uh, probably uh, direct leadership of um, Iran and Qasim uh, Soleimani. Um, and then there's another guy that's popped up over in Greek, a, a newly elected official that, I mean, he's he's asked the, the, the Pope to, um, you know, let's, let's make a, a peace treaty in the Middle East, uh, you know, between Israel and the Arab nations and the Palestinians. And so that guy might be the, uh, eventually become the second beast, or someone like him who will do the negotiation at the, you know, at the negotiating tables rather than at the um, end of a gun. But Soleimani is more the strong arm, and uh, you know uh, this other fellow I can't remember his name, the Greek uh, politician, just been elected there, but uh, he might be uh, being groomed to set up a consortium of the east and west legs of the old Roman Empire, getting the European nations to join with the five major nations in the. Uh, East uh, of, of Arabs, so that they have a revived Roman Empire, like uh, Daniel's uh, interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream says, with the two feet with ten toes being nations of the world. Um, but it's got to—I think it's got to be bigger than that. I think we've got to have ten nations to cover the whole planet, ten regions. But if not, if it's only the revived Roman Empire, then it will be five European nations and five Arab nations that are part of the old Eastern. Uh, Roman Empire. So that's what's really been, uh, you know, what, what we've been watching is because the fighting is becoming very, uh, very intense, uh, and, and the White House here has actually done something toward uh, being involved in it, whether I approve it or not, sort of the thing. But there seems to be some action other than golf at the White House, um, and and we are in the the, the second uh, uh, half of the Shemitah, you know, uh, of the Red Moons. This year we we'll have two of them, and then that's it and for a long time. So this year may well be the year of great changes, and that that is all focused around what's happening over ISIS in the Middle East. As far as the new Madrid... Uh, oh, be sorry. Before sorry, you move on, yeah, it, yeah, I do, and, and this is from me personally. Um, trying to wrap my head around this, and we're seeing things happen so quickly, but if let's just say that your your premise is correct with respect to the placement or the identification and placement and operational aspects of uh the one if not two potential antichrist candidates how quickly could this come about in other words are we looking at uh, a process that could, you know, the eradication of ISIS or at least the containment and the establishment of a peace treaty? How quickly can that come about? Could it be months? Would it be months or could it would it take would it have to take longer, I guess, is my question. Well, months perhaps to uh, to get the initial portions of it signed and in place. Um the there are pockets of ISIS around the place that will not give up. They'll have to be taken down. So that won't happen until, you know, the an Arab consortium forms uh, of the Arab nations uh, to put it, put ISIS down, or ISIL or IS, whatever we're going to call it. Now, I don't know from week to week what we call them. But um, anyway, uh, I do see the beginning of that peace treaty this year sometime. Uh, we have the Oslo Accords, which were drafted and tried back in the late 90s and then went to sleep, and now then they've been trying to revive it. Uh, Shimon Peres has been talking to the Pope about making a one-world religion. Uh, Shimon Peres uh, had um, uh, Nimrod Novik, uh, who was on his um, advisory team when, when Shimon Peres was uh, Prime Minister of Israel, and Nimrod Novik was a, a group of, a part of a group of people from the United States and, and Israel and Europe that drafted the Oslo Accords. And that may be reactivated, or it might be the blueprint of what they draw up, uh, which would just need, need a couple of changes, and they could put it into place tomorrow if the parties agreed to it. But that hinges, in my opinion, on Netanyahu holding power. And if he doesn't hold power uh, in in uh, Israel, 
the new government may well swing toward a deal and giving away more land, which is a no-no, but that's what they're, they're headed for. All that could okay. happen just suddenly. I mean, like, you know, weeks, maybe, you know, maybe a few months, but I mean, very, very much so this year, between now and the end of the year. What what starts the and forgive my uh, my ignorance I suppose in advance but but this is more of a uh, cross between a uh, well it's it's kind of a doctrinal question but what starts the seven year clock I mean if if seven years was contained on a stopwatch and when you press that that stopwatch to start the seven year the seventh year what what act starts that seventh year or the year well i think it's going to i think it's going to be a, a series of events that happen rather quickly over the middle east and uh we will be brought to the to the brim of nuclear war because there may be elements in in israel that don't want that peace treaty uh who go ahead and make a frenzy strike on iran for the nuclear threat there that event could trigger such chaos across the planet with people regrouping and forming alliances openly anyway to go against Israel and possibly um, I guess against America too but you know we've already been been uh, horribly uh, neutered by the current administration here but somebody will probably finish it and all that will be part of the chaotic threat of war total global nuclear war um and the 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 peace has to be brought about by the first beast, the the Antichrist. Now, how he's going to do that is probably, um, since he's, if, if it is Soleimani, he's an Iranian, he will defeat ISIS without question. He'll do an absolute uh, beat down of them and win. And as such, will be a hero in Iran and in the Middle East because he will have brought uh, peace to you know, North and Northeast Africa and to the surrounding uh, Arab states around Iran. Uh, so he could probably be the, you know, the leader of the Arab uh, consortium that forms a, the new eastern leg of the revived Roman Empire. All that has to come about to begin the tribulation. But understand, as, as far as a rapture position, that the rapture does not take place until the man of sin is revealed. So if he's revealed at the beginning of the tribulation, and it starts somewhere around him, in the beginning, he will be, you know, hailed a hero by people across the planet, whatever. And he will have the support of the alien beings, you know, like Satan and his fallen ones, posing as our elder brothers from out there in other worlds and galaxies and whatever. So he's going to have super technology behind him, which will make it easy for him to work tremendous technological magic for the people of the earth and fool everyone, even the very elect of the, the, the believers, if such were possible. And it would not be possible if the believers were not here. So sometime between the moment that the tribulation begins and he he is declared a great military genius and leader of the world and, and, and uh, you know, uh, ready to bring peace to the Middle East, from that moment until the middle of the tribulation, somewhere in there, the rapture can occur. Uh, and there will be people saved uh, in, the, in the tribulation period after the rapture. There will be the, the tribulation saints that will be called up, in my opinion. Uh, we all read the same scripture, and some people have different interpretations, but that's the way I see it. And so we're looking at the beginning of that, I think, this year. Uh, the the seven-year tribulation, I think, will start this year. And it will probably be a seven-year tribulation uh, based, um, well, I, I, on a 360-day year lunar calendar, I'm pretty sure. But uh, it might uh, it might be 265 days, but it's 260 if you base it on a 360-day lunar calendar year that the uh, nation of Israel has used, you know, since it formed. Right. Uh, yeah, I just, hmm. yeah. There may be wow. other factors like famine and riots in America, but something, uh, a number of some things are going to make the people of the earth very dissatisfied with their governments and wanting peace at any price, and that is going to be a dangerous time. Hmm. So, so the stopwatch is at the ready, or at least... Someone's holding that stopwatch anyway, metaphorically speaking, I suppose. Wow. Okay. Hmm. It'd be interesting to see who's funding ISIS, really, you know. <laughs> Probably a lot of capitalists that uh, are in Europe and America. Yes. 
Yes, and we touched on that earlier. I mean, we, the obviously the CIA, the uh, MI6, and and uh, the Mossad, to some believe it or not, to some extent. But I mean, all criminal cabals within the various Western intelligence world, as well as a lot of the Arab countries, um, even within Saudi Don't Arabia. Is, Mr. Is, Soros. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's yeah. You've got uh, people who you know, one hour of war is worth. Uh, uh, more than one year of peace, you know, to these people. So, yeah, in, indeed. All right. Well, thank you for for your input well, on that. What we're seeing with the, the ISIS, sorry, with, with the ISIS situation, you know, being uh, blown up so rapidly, you know, worldwide, uh, it's it smacks of the way that George Soros goes into a country and has uh, his people on both sides of an issue, stirs up uh, a conflict, and then out of the conflict comes one united. You know, group of countries under one banner, and he controls it all. And that this is just, just I mean, it, it, it's the way um, the communist theory works as well. You have thesis, antithesis, you know, uh, enemy, good guy, whatever. And now that comes a synthesis of a new way, and he's got people on both sides of the issues, whatever they are. And and ISIS is definitely one side of an issue, whereas the Muslim nations in the Middle East uh, that want not a caliphate, but a confederacy of Muslim Arab nations, they are on the other side, where ISIS wants to have a caliphate with no individual countries. So he's got them on both sides, and I know it's going to go toward the the confederation, where the nation, the Arab nations involved in it can keep their sovereignty, but still be part of a united confederacy of Arabs and Muslims. Anyway, I'm through talking now, so that's all right. <laughs> well, all right, Joe. I'll bounce it back to you because you had started about the uh, yeah the, the new Madrid. Yeah. Um, Stan, we saw some. We saw a pretty. Uh, there's, there's and this is I'm going to incorporate a listener question into here. Um, one of the listeners wanted to know about the uh, earthquakes that we've seen in the uh, northeastern. Or, I'm sorry, northern East Pacific rise. Uh, there was a 5.0, 4.6, and we saw a a I think there were two quakes in Japan. Uh, I believe it was yesterday, and they 7.0 and a 6.9, and it boiled. They boiled it down to one 6.8, and uh, you know we see that the there's, there's been a common denominator in the earthquakes I've seen at least with a, with a depth of 10. Uh, point zero kilometers. I think we've talked about that in the past, but the New Madrid, New Madrid has been a issue where the Department of Homeland Security and their geospatial operations have uh, made significant room in incorporating the New Madrid issue as a huge issue for American safety, possibly, you know, dislocating up to 144 million or affecting 144 million people if it were to crash. Um, what are we seeing here? And I see some of the maps you put up. Is there an increase in the uh, earthquakes, natural earthquakes occurring in this along this fault line? Well, hmm. along the New Madrid, there are some small little tremors. Uh, really, nothing that I would get excited about normally. But because of the activity that we see around Oklahoma City, where they're fracking and you know fracking for gas and oil by you know putting pressurized water down these formations and, and causing little earth, well, significant number of earthquakes. And then they're taking the salt water back out and they're dumping that somewhere in another deep uh, crevasse where they use 10,000 pounds of pressure to shove it into the rock formation. So they're taking salt water, throwing it down into there, getting the gas and oil out with the salt, salt water, leaving a, a, a vacant place there in Oklahoma, around Oklahoma City in those fracking wells, and then pumping it out to somewhere else. Now, in, in the last 30 days, we, we've seen um, quakes uh, around Dallas, you know, uh, uh, south of, of the Oklahoma City stuff, just directly south. Um, and we've seen a number of little quakes, uh, when I say little, you know, like twos and threes, around the New Madrid fault line, uh, principally above Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and on the, the northeast corner of Arkansas, which they, they're, they're both on, you know, like, One's on the west side, one's on the east side of the Mississippi River. And those earthquakes uh, are, you know, over a month, uh, these things have, have been forming a pattern. They're not in the last uh, seven days, but in the last 30 days. So looking at that, and then I, these Japanese earthquakes you're talking about, I'm thinking, holy cow, I hope that doesn't, 
let <laughs> the Fukushima related stuff uh, loose. Um, but um, you know that whole that tells us that whole western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire is undergoing some changes, and it looks like. Uh, from the pattern of these things over in Japan, that they're running from the plate boundary, the Western Pacific, Northwest Pacific plate boundary in the Ring of Fire, going directly into the Sea of Japan, as though a new fissure is opening up to split off the main island of Japan from, say, oh, uh, Tokyo up to, um, oh, um, yeah, up to Sakata and above there. And, um, I'm just trying to see here. I'm trying to read the Japanese on this. But anyway, uh, it looks like it's going to be a new fault line that breaks across the, the northern tip of the main island of Japan. And on the other side of the Pacific, we've been seeing, uh, as you as you mentioned, the Pacific rise. Honolulu, Honolulu has been having earthquakes related to the uh, volcanic activity there on the big island. And in the Pacific Rise, there's already a little plate that's been there for a long time that connects to the Baja, but it is definitely under stress now from Panama to uh, just just a little bit north of Santa Cruz in the ocean there, and then bending around up toward uh, the Baja, the Gulf of California. Um, and then new quakes in the last 30 days down the down from um, Santa Cruz area there down into the um, um, the uh, Peru, uh, what do they call it, the Peru rise or something like that. But um, the the problem is that we've we've got stresses all over the Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, in, you know, on the Chile side, uh, the western side of South America, and then Peru, and out into that Peru basin out there. So that whole plate is definitely feeling stress and starting to pop along the known plate boundaries. At the same time. We've got stuff running at the middle of the Atlantic Ocean from the, the South Atlantic, uh, even down to the Pole, all the way up to um, Iceland. And this, again, is unusual. I mean, we watch these patterns. There's a lot of your listeners that watch it and send me um, emails. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? And uh, so we're all seeing the same thing, that there's a lot of unusual activity in places that don't normally see a lot of activity like this together, you know, within a, a week to a month of each other. So the Atlantic, the Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, you know, Japan, particularly up in the northern part of it, and even in um, Greece and around there in the Baltic Sea in that area, there's a cluster of quakes going on there and and north of India. Uh, they're just... There's something happening out there, and uh, I would expect it, and uh, I'm seeing what I would expect start now. We've got weather problems. They'll tell you right now that they won't call it global warming. Pretty soon they're going to actually call it climate change on a a, a planetary basis. And they're going to say, well, uh, we're going to have severe droughts, uh, worse than we've had already. And California says, oh, no. And Colorado isn't too happy about that either, but... And then the eastern states are going to have more cold, and uh, that's going to hurt them and their crops just as much as, as drought. So the climate change is going to hurt food production all over the world. And the economy is just hanging by a thread, and the countries in the know have been uh, buying gold and uh, consolidating their positions free of the U.S. dollar. So that's going to hit our economy, and people are going to be unemployed, and people are going to be crying out for a new global economy that works uh, where those rich cats get their just desserts, the Illuminati get their desserts, and people are, you know, enough of the common people are aware that there's, you know, rich bankers and blah, blah, blah at the top that have been manipulating world events toward a one world order, that they'll be happy to see them go. And it'll take a man who's a man of the people in the Middle East, this Qasem Soleimani or someone like him, great military leader, who will overthrow a lot of these places and, and banks and uh, uh, economic consortiums in favor of the, the grassroots person and he'll be a folk hero he'll be able to do this because he'll have super technological weapons given to him by satan posing as a messenger of light you know love and harmony from the from the stars this i i see this just coming upon us rapidly this year there's just so much so many sightings of ufos i mean so many more than normal um and 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 the world tensions on so many fronts are right at that uh, fever pitch 
that it's only going to take a little spark in each of these things I was telling you, these crisis curves, and people are going to want to revolt and overthrow their governments in favor of someone who can stop the pain of poverty and food deprivation or famines and can get the weather into control. So I, we're, we're ripe for it. We're, we're just ready for it. Hmm. Well, yeah. Isn't that it, happy it, news? <laughs> it's pretty weighty news. I mean, I mean it... In looking at this, obviously, everyone is expecting something. Reverend Graham had mentioned the coming storm. Everyone, it seems, that is spiritually in tune can feel something about to take place. Um, Obviously, we don't know with certainty or precision exactly what that is. We have our suspicions, economic, uh, earth, or earth changes, war, or combination of all, of everything. So, you know, it's real simple. If we understand, I mean, to me it is anyway, if we're spiritually in tune, we can feel it. Uh, we don't need a weather forecaster to tell us that a storm is approaching and how bad it's going to be. Maybe those people, and I use this analogy uh, on, on on our website, but, you know, uh, the uh, people who look through the Bible or look, uh, look at current events through the biblical scripture biblical prophecy. I think uh, we have to turn towards people like yourself and others who have a great understanding and uh, just to, so we can stay out of harm's way for as long as possible. And I think that's what that's what we need to do. But man, yeah, it's it's things are happening in a break next. Yeah. Well, we need to keep an eye on the Vatican, uh, this this new pope and uh Shimon Peres and this new leader in Greece. Um, for developments down the road toward this united uh, Roman Empire, revived Roman Empire. I could be wrong. You know, in my book, The Cosmic Conspiracy, um, on page 200, I have the Club of Rome map for the entire planet divided up into ten regions. And that may just be a red herring that was put out there, you know, by Satan a long time ago to make us think that the ten regions spoke of in the prophecy, you know, um, in Daniel interpreting the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream about the ten toes. Uh, it might be that those ten toes are not global, but they are regional, you know, between uh, the nations of uh, Europe being five and five being from the Arab nations. Um, I don't know. So I'm keeping an open mind, and I'm certainly not, uh, you know, pedantic about what I suggested in the uh, the draft, the first draft of the uh, Cosmic Conspiracy. But we are seeing something, you know, patterns forming that we need to, to be aware of. Stan, this might sound like a really academic question or really uh, how how can we prepare i mean obviously you know it, to the average person like me uh, out out in the world i mean we work we we've got families we've we've got commitments we we're just we're just average people you know we're average folk how do we prepare for something like this and how do we avoid damage or how do how do we best i we're going we're going to get clipped regardless i, I know i mean wounded or whatever but but what can we do to best prepare ourselves in addition to preparing ourselves spiritually in the word i mean what would you recommend uh, well look there are christians all over the world at the moment and, and have been for uh, a long time being killed for being christian by you know their enemies whether it be atheist or uh, muslim extremist or whatever um of you know, recent uh, days uh, a number of what twenty some odd twenty one uh, Christians, uh, Coptic Christians, were beheaded in a most yep. terrible way. And I'm, you know, what could they do to prepare to leave their country? Um, you know, they couldn't afford to do that. Where would they go? And here, I mean, uh, you know, we have resources here in this country, and, and uh, people in Australia have resources, and in Europe, but in South America, and in China, and in India, the percentage of people who can afford to physically prepare is very small compared to the total population. Here, if you prepare, uh, you know, for digging into your house and thinking that'll be, you know, putting everything in your house, that'll be safe or out in your farm, that's not going to be the cleverest thing. But certainly having made provisions so that you can go mobile either by car or bike or by on foot to, you know, to get out of town, out of where the major population centers are, uh, that is that is clever in my opinion. 
uh, we need to endure. We need to have, like the five wise virgins at, waiting at the, for the arrival of the groom at midnight, we need to have our, our wicks trimmed. We need to have the supplies we need to be ready to go uh, when we're called, you know, when the groom calls the, the five wise virgins, you know, the bride in essence. I think that we will have to leave our homes at some point to escape uh, the persecution that's going to happen here in the United States and in uh, Europe and South America and Australia. When we do that, uh, from what people have shared with us in the dreams and dream visions that they've had, Christian people, uh, the Holy Spirit will indwell the believers who are being true to the Messiah and withdrawing from this new uh, arising global world order. And we will have transport like teleportation that like Stephen got to when he got moved up to talk to the eunuch to, to witness to him. He just was a blink of an eye gone from here and up there. Um, we'll have food like the feeding of the 5,000 that Jesus did. Um, the, uh, there will be healing um, as, as Jesus did. And, and the lame will be able to walk. You know, the blind will be able to see. We're going to see this pour out on the, the bride, the church, and it will it will flow into the Christian community then, um, and more and more people will be joined in the the uh, joining in the Holy Spirit uh, of all the believers. That means that we'll go where the Spirit tells us and uh, where the Spirit puts us. The technology that is there will be as good as or better than what you saw, saw in Star Trek, like food replicators. Okay, your 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 food bowl fills up, and that's not. That happened in the time of Jesus. That's not a stretch of imagination. Teleportation off of the starship to another location. Okay, Stephen was teleported. To, to, you know, put it in the modern idiom, but that's what happened to him. And in the in the uh, uh, the infirmary on board the uh, Enterprise ship in Star Trek, where they had little gizmos they could wave over and regenerate tissue and uh, make your body whole. Broken bone. Oh well, just a second. We'll run a little gizmo over it, and it all heals. Technology better than that. We're when the spirit is indwelling the church here, the members of the of the body can touch uh, a person who's got broken bones or damage and watch it heal right before them. They don't need a little gizmo; it's in the spirit, which is connected to you know how God directs things here. So that's that kind of preparation means you've got to be staying close to the Lord um, daily, uh, saying, "Okay, you know what do I need to do today." And oh, here's a situation that's arisen. How do I handle this? And then stay, you know, within your will. What's happening? And that means that we will have to make the the leap of faith, um, uh, like in the Indiana Jones movie where they had the uh, search for the Holy Grail, and Indiana Jones had to uh, step out over a great chasm uh, into space, just step out and hope to goodness he didn't fall, you know, three thousand feet below. And by faith, suddenly there was a bridge of rock between him and where the grail was stored. That's what we have to do. We have to leap out in faith and say, okay, I have to leave behind a lot of the stuff I've accumulated here in my house or property because um, you can't take it with you, and we're going to have to go where the Spirit tells us. So that's going to be a test of faith at that point. So oh. get ready for that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree uh, a lot with what you said, Stan. Uh, I do believe that we will have to leave our homes. Um, I do see the, as you said, uh, the any one spark can can take. You know, we're at the tipping points of many uh, from e economic, uh, political, uh, social unrest in many different parts of the world, and, and one spark in, in each of these different areas, or just in a few of these areas, can create a domino effect. That with the the times we're living in, uh, all these you know governmental bodies, religious and governmental bodies intertwined with each other, the uh, blood moons that we have, the the earthquakes, the weather. I mean, it's all not that Christians need signs, but these things were foretold in the Bible. To uh, we were told to know the seasons we were in, and we were definitely in a season of change. And it's uh, thankfully it's one step closer to to the Lord Jesus returning, but unfortunately. We will have to walk through and be tried by the fire as we approach these times that are coming. Yeah. You know, um, a weird thing happened today. I was taking up the, the mail of books and things, um, you know, to our local post office where we go all the time. And um, I know the staff there and the lady that owns the place. And 
walked in, there was a new guy on the counter, the training, and I looked at him and I thought, holy cow, this guy belongs in the Middle East. Black beard, black hair, young fella, dark, you know, not not smiling eyes. I thought, is is, is ISIS is slipping in, or you know, someone is Obama letting this happen? And then I got home and looked at the front of Drudge. And it says, U.S. officials submit concern over Syrian refugee effort by Obama to let him in to the United States. I'm thinking, I wonder who this guy is. Or, you know, they're going to put stuff in our mail here. And I, I hate to feel that way, but you know, it's like profiling. I looked at him, I thought, holy cow, I've seen you on TV, I'm sure, you know, in a bad way. Well, and, and, and the guy may be nothing more than just, you know, unfortunate to, to look so much like the Middle Easterns. But, oh, Lord. It, well, it, if we, yeah, you know, the, this unfettered immigration that that we're we're seeing in in the Syrian refugees. I mean, we created, as you pointed out, we we created the refugee problem to the extent that we we armed and helped the anti-Assad armies, the the terrorists, if you will, and it's it's through sort of bipartisan support. And of course, we created the refugee problem in Syria. Uh, uh, millions of refugees, and as well as all throughout the Middle East, and now we're embracing these people, bringing them here wholesale to dilute. And this is not to not to disparage the people that are the refugees, but uh, the the deliberate dilution of our culture, of our the fabric, the moral, the makeup of our country, and w- without any concern. For the integrity, the population, the integ- integrity of the population here in this country, we're losing our national identity. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And um, yeah. it, it, it's by it's by design. So yeah, we can look back now and then see all these chess moves now that are unfolding before our eyes. But it tells you that there's been a lot of late nights spent by whoever's planning this to get these clever moves. So many moves ahead of us. Yeah. Yes, yes indeed. Joe, do you have uh you've got some issues or you got not issues but uh questions just, there. Yeah, looking here uh to see what questions were left for Stan. Oh, uh Yellowstone. Um Margot asks uh she says she continues to be concerned about what's happening in Yellowstone and wants to know that she says there's a cover up of what's really going on. And um have you seen any uh, indicators from Yellowstone. I know that it's something that we follow a lot, um, and things seem to be changing there uh, somewhat. But that's not something that I've been keeping up on uh, too often. And I know it uh, doesn't change much week to week. But anything s- significant as far as Yellowstone stick out at you? Well, I've been trying to you know run a, a analyses over the last oh, ten or eleven years of data I've got out there on these what what they've published and. There is some increase in activity uh, earthquake-wise uh, near Maple Creek Sensor, and uh, definitely Madison River's been having some little tremors, little quakes, uh, which could be magma on the move. And I know that the major part of what we're looking at or concerned with here is the magma movement in the northeast corner of Yellowstone. Um, but I have I've got no more uh, inside tips from people involved in it or related to people involved in it. So I can't tell you any more than what I know now. Uh, it's uh, I do know that, that, that Yellowstone's been rising a bit and then falling off of it and then rising a bit, you know, as far as the altitude in various places of it, which, again, is part of the, the magma dome building up. Um, it's just one of the many things that we have to consider. Uh, would I live in that area by choice? No. <laughs> And would I live uh, east of there and uh, southeast of there? Uh, no, I, you know, I, I not not close to it anyway. And we're in Colorado, which is almost due south of that. But uh, I think the prevailing winds of, of the, the gases and things that are going to be released, if that does start to have a magma eruption or you know a volcanic eruption, it will. It, the prevailing winds will blow it over into Kansas and uh, toward. The, the Mississippi River and down into uh, the Bayou Country, uh, <clears throat> you know, and how far it goes, I don't know. I know that's why FEMA's concerned. Uh, we, 
we have gotten some information from guys working with FEMA as contractors over on the eastern coast on various things, and it does seem that FEMA is really preparing for massive movements of people out of the major cities somewhere uh, east of the Mississippi. Other than that, I don't have any more information on Yellowstone and other areas there. No, okay, it's interesting you brought that up in the context of Yellowstone, but what you're saying, if if I hear you correctly, is or understand it properly, is FEMA is preparing to relocate masses out of the city, but east of the Mississippi, although the locations are not specific to you. Is that correct? That's correct. And and the, the relocation may be the people just start to uh, run out of the cities to, to escape, and FEMA will be there to kind of direct them, so will Homeland Security and some of the military troops, I'm sure. And they may be on relocated on both sides of the the Mississippi. Hmm. Um it's uh it's hard hmm. to say where they're going to put them but you know they've run the exercises in the last 3 or 4 years down uh, the Mississippi and the New, New Madrid region to uh, you know have, feed millions of people and body bags and and uh, you know makeshift or well not makeshift but prefabbed uh, caskets that will hold two people and then, so they can stack them and bury them in big uh, areas. So something, uh, they are preparing for something seriously, and I think um, we may be getting close to that one way or another, whether it be warfare, whether it be geological or what. Um, I, I just don't know. Um, you know, I I don't even know if we get fed the information from a, an alleged leak, uh, whether we can trust it or not these days. Right. Jill from Chino writes, and this is kind of an interesting question. We have not, uh, uh, we haven't visited this topic recently. You mentioned body bags and and uh, other such uh, su- supplies. Uh, she she wants to know your take on um, your thoughts now, given what you know now. Uh, two, two and a half years later about the ammunition, large ammunition purchases by DHS and other federal agencies. How do these fit in? Are these still relevant, she asked, and that's Joe from Chino, California, listening live. Well, it takes a while to run off the the, the billions, like with a B of rounds that they want for these various government departments and military um, they may still be filling the orders that we saw placed uh, two, three years ago. The thing that they're preparing for is not that they have to use all that ammo at once, but they want to have it for you know, policing what comes out of the catastrophes that are ahead of us because we will not probably have factories functioning and mineral resources needed to make the gunpowder and stuff here in the United States anyway, should these major disasters happen and uh, civil war break out. So they want to have all the stuff they will need for years, and that's probably why they've gotten so much, uh, in addition to drying up the supply to the smaller purchasers, you know, individuals and, and uh, companies that, uh, you know, want to protect themselves and their, their employees. Um, hmm. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. By the way, that uh, that Greek guy's name that, that uh, people are saying might be involved in this false prophet side of things uh, is Alexis uh, Tsipras. He's the new prime minister, uh, allegedly an atheist and a left-winger. And uh, he, uh, they say that almost magically he's landed himself in the precarious situation that where you know, Greece is broken financially and the banks, you know, closed and open, closed and open. And so uh, this guy, you know, certainly he may be the one to watch for what is is growing. Um, right. I don't know. I, I'm keeping that open. Hmm. All right. We'll keep our eyes on that. Uh, Joe, I well, see you looking yeah, over I, there. I still get back to the thing. Go, I, go ahead. I still Tim. get back to the thing that that we are not to panic. That the man of sin, the first one, the Antichrist, before the false prophet, the Antichrist has to be revealed to the world. Or, you know, of, of believers before the rapture can occur, but the rapture can occur, you know, 20 seconds after that, or two months, or you know, two and a half years, but right after that, and there will be 
a, a rapture of the bride, which those are the, the Christians who are definitely always, you know, praying that they're found worthy daily and, and uh, following uh, Yeshua, the Messiah. But there will be more people the more, that who become believers or, or believers who become activated during the tribulation after the rapture. So, you know, I just can't see any other way than just wait for the the Antichrist, you know, the great military genius to be revealed. And Soleimani is certainly coming to the forefront just almost daily. If you just look up on Google uh, News and stuff and say, Qasim, Q-A-S-E-M, sometimes they spell it Q-A-S-S-E-M, General Qasem Soleimani. And the Google News stories on him all over the planet are just legion. There are huge numbers of them. And keep an eye on him. I think that'll be the first beast we've got to look for. And if he gets a head wound huh, and then magically reappears on the scene, uh, you know, he's definitely revealed. Would would Western... I'm not even sure how to, how to uh, structure this question, but would the Western world accept a man like that as... Um, a, a, now, it, just in the political, geopolitical sense, would the Western world, the West, the U.S., the U.K., um, would they accept a man like that as, as a uh, world leader, if you will? We might not. I guess we might not have well, you saying it, but well, well, look, uh, the people are going to want uh, someone to stop the chaos and the threat of annihilation by nuclear war and famine, whatever. And if this guy or some other guy is backed by Satan posing as, you know, uh, the head of a alien race that's come here from the stars and created us, um, they will have technology to give to the, the new world leader that will astound the people of Earth. And they'll say, look, who could beat a guy like this? I mean, look what he's got. He's offering us, you know, from his friends in space, you know. And, um, hey, they don't have any track record. They're not Democrats, Republicans, Muslims, or Christians. They are just what they are. Right. And and that's that's how people are going to fall for it. It's going to be a deception so incredibly clever that we would all fall for it if it weren't for the fact that some of us are taking prophecy literally and sharing it with our brothers and sisters in the faith and saying, look, don't be fooled, but get ready. And, and that's what we have to do. And I think that that's our – you know, Stan, I, I – I don't think I've ever talked to you about this, but I personally believe that each and every one of us listening to this broadcast, or not even listening, but but just existing today, I believe that we were actually born for this time, and I think that we all have specific jobs to do. And if we pray hard enough and, and um, get mentally properly correct uh, in the in the proper mindset will be tasked with those particular jobs. We'll understand what our job is. Perhaps it's only to to save one soul, or maybe not even that, maybe to touch one person. And that one person will in turn save one or ten or a hundred people or you know, be responsible for, for their salvation. But I, I do believe that we're born for a time like this. I think you're right. And, and it's going to be like it was in the day of Pentecost, there's going to be healings and talking in various different languages from people that don't even uh, speak the language normally. There are going to be miracles performed in the early part, and I guess during the tribulation as well, but in the early part, there will be massive miracles for, uh, performed by the agency of the Holy Spirit indwelling the church. It's it's a mighty outreach to people that are borderline believers to say, look, it is real, it's not fictional, and what we're doing through our bodies here is through the spirit that indwells us from the real creator of of, of all it is. And uh, that we're approaching that time. And, and I think we were born certainly to that task. Jesus knew us before we were even in our mother's womb. So, um, you know, we, it's, it's our uh, job to, to pick up the, the, uh, the sword of truth, as it were, and get out there and use it. Amen, brother. Wow. Man, that hour went fast. Uh, we're at the top of the hour, Stan. I got to tell you, you uh, oh, never, <laughs> never fail, never fail. I mean, it's it's always great getting your insight. 
uh, on these matters, especially matters of geopolitics. I've, I've found your your insight to be tremendous, and I, and I really appreciate that. But I really and I really mean this. I, I, I believe that all of us, you know, we, we of course we all look for purpose in life, don't we? I mean, that's what we do. Uh, some bigger purpose, and I think that that uh, many people have found it in what they're doing right now. And I think that uh, people like yourself, and, and boy, I hope we're included in in, in this as, as watchmen to to warn others as to what's coming. But I think you, you're doing a fantastic yeah. job. My goodness, well, I don't Absolutely. know anybody else you know out there doing it other than, than the people we know, and yeah. we're a dwindling number. Hey, by the way, I'm going to. I've been invited to go over to uh, with Gary Sturman and Bob Bullock uh, in Oklahoma uh, here in the next few weeks to film a couple of interviews on um, Eden and on the Solomon uh, analysis in their new TV program that's going to be going on Direct TV and a number of uh, Christian TV stations in uh, you know, Colorado and elsewhere. So uh, they bounce Skywatch. back and uh, Skywatch yep, TV. Yep, yep. Okay. Great yep. organization, you know. It's it's uh, there's really little. Uh, there should not be competition, and, and no one should look at it as competition. We're all in this together, uh, going going yep. forward with the same objective. So fantastic, man. So you're gonna, yeah. This is great. Uh, talking about your findings with respect to Eden and, and such, but but folks, if you, if you haven't gotten Stan's lecture series, please. Go to standeo.com. What a great, comprehensive, uh, well worth the time to invest in that. You did a lot of work on that. My goodness. So. Still working on it now. I've got to, uh, you know, make a uh, printed uh, book about it to, uh, you know, give the proper uh, presentation of the facts. Um, and if the Lord tarries a while longer, then that'll be one of the jobs that I've got. And. Holly's doing her new book, uh, which will be months in the in the writing and researching, but all related to end time situations and what's happening. So yeah, excellent. We we keep working until the good Lord says time's up. <laughs> Fantastic, Stan. Thank you for another uh week of your time. I'm glad to see that you had a an excellent surprise party. Uh one <laughs> one for the record books. And, and thank you, Holly and uh, yeah, we just hope that uh, we can have many more birthdays for you, Stan, and uh, for us all until the Lord calls us out of here. Well, I'd like for us all to be doing that in the heavens rather than here. But anyway, Amen. Be yeah, it as it may, right, and you guys are doing a heck of a good job and reaching out to folks with all the stuff you do several times okay. a week, many times a week, and uh, I, I don't know how you do it and, and stay sane. But anyway. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, we're not saying we're saying. Yeah, who who's saying that? <laughs> no, oh, uh, okay, sorry, I got that wrong. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I I'll brother. let you get on to your next hour. Give our best to Holly and uh, everyone uh, there at your household. God bless you, my friend. Stay safe. God bless you. Good All night, right. folks. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, Stan. All right, we're going to take our commercial break. We'll be right back on the other side with your phone calls. We do want to hear from you at six six one. Two four four nine eight three nine. That's six six one two four four nine eight three nine. This Tuesday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. We want to hear from you this hour at six six one two four four nine eight three nine. If you're already called in and on hold, just as an FYI to those uh, who might have been trying to get a hold of us and who call in, you have to press one to let us know that you want to speak to us. If you're on hold and you haven't done so already, um, this I want to give you a, a brief um, announcement. Uh, from HH Connections, from John, um, and he writes this, The team at HH Connections wants to say thank you and hello to our new friends from all 50 states and 14 countries around the world. God has blessed this initiative so fruitfully that we have had over 500 Hagman listeners check in since our launch two weeks ago. We have introduced many new friends to each other over the past... Oh, many new friends to each other in over 10 states and are making dozens of connections a day. Currently, new introductions are taking five to seven days. We look forward to introducing all of you fellow Hagman listeners. God bless each and every one of you. Be encouraged. New friends are on the way. From John. Thank you, John, for all the work you're doing at HH Connections. And no, as my dad would say, it's not a dating site. It is a site for fellowship. It is a, it's not even a site. It's a uh, email address that you send an email to if you 
uh, want fellowship, if you want to help other people who are seeking fellowship, those who are lonely and don't have family, uh, people who are shut in, people who need uh, somebody to talk to. And um, that is hhconnections at startmail.com. Yeah, it's it's a preparation method of preparation too, you know. If if um, and and we've seen this happen a lot where um, you, you might meet a listener in your own hometown, you you would never know them to be of the same mindset as you. Perhaps our logo on their vehicle, uh, you know, you might say, "Hey, I listen to the same program. I recognize that," or whatever. You know, it, it's a method because we're all. Stan said, and and we know, time is short, and and I believe it to be. And who knows? um, You you might have a neighbor or someone close within your proximity that you can reach out to. And uh, um, like minds, you know, you can move mountains. So why be alone when you don't have to be? Absolutely right. Let's go to the phones. We're going to go to area code uh, seven six three first seven six three. Thanks for holding. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman report. <laughs> What's well, going wow. on tonight? Hey, hey. I think Just, uh, I think my ears are bleeding. We, oh, we heard a big a big bang when you when you jumped on. Just to let you know. Uh, but okay. <laughs> no long time ahead. listener. I'm just. Uh, First time caller wanted to say thanks for everything you guys are doing. It's awesome. Well, thank you for listening. And, and you know, um, where where about in the country are you with seven six three area code? Is that the? I mean, you don't have to Minneapolis, be in the city. Minnesota. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, you, you know, it's. Um, what do you make of all this stuff going on? The ISIS and and everything that we see taking place. What do you make of it? Well, I find it pretty amazing, actually, just everything that's happening. And like you guys say, how quickly everything is unfolding now that it's actually starting. It seems like it's snowballing and going quicker. Yeah, I do, too. I mean, I, yeah, it's. I, I'm amazed at how rapid things have progressed, even over, well, going back to 2012 to today, roughly, well, it's three years, uh, uh but my goodness, how much ground we've covered and how fast things have happened! I can only imagine what the next two, three years are going to bring. So, but uh, glad you're glad you're with yeah, us in me, Minneapolis. Love you. Me, glad. Oh yeah, definitely. Me too. Me too. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I always listen to you guys. I've never really, you know, I've all the things that you guys talk about, all the stories and everything in the news. Uh, I see it around here now even. It's it's crazy. Like, you know, for a long time you just hear about it and it seems like, oh, that happens in some other state. But now, yeah, you can see everything you guys talk about happening right up here. I mean, even the guy from uh, Gray State, he lives in this area. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, it. yeah. And I think the things that are taking place, Minneapolis, St. Paul, in that area that, that in which you live I, I look at that as kind of like a, a test or a beta test area and, and I suspect there are several around the country in fact I think the area in which we live I know for marketing purposes it's, a, it's an area that where new products are tested I think you're going to see things happen more in your area than perhaps somebody in um, Billings Montana for example so keep your eye out watch for the demographics to rapidly change you're going to see that taking place in that in, in the twin cities so oh definitely i've i've seen a lot of those uh military vehicles uh the the uh what are they mraps i think yep i've seen yep. those now just on normal city streets and uh i've told people about it and then they're like they'll call me and say oh i i just saw one just driving yes. down the street for no reason so I definitely think they're trying to get people used to it or acclimated. Yeah, yeah, I, I do, I do as well. Well, well, my friend, God bless you. We really appreciate you calling in, checking in with us, and uh, call anytime. We we appreciate having you on board, and, and, and thanks for your thank you diligence. God bless All right. you, and take care. All right, brother. Have thanks, a good night. Man. You too, Joe. Bye bye. 
Bye. We're going to go from one caller in the 736 area code and move to another. No, caller. that was a 763. This Sorry, 763 area code. Okay. Caller 2 in 763 area code, you're live. Hi. Hi. You're from the same area, Minneapolis, I St. Just, Paul area. I had talked previous to this, and I just wanted to know what you found out about um, Pastor Langford coming back on and doing some spiritual programs to help us. Well, that's in the works. Um, yeah, that, that's in the works. We're actually looking at something perhaps af- after the uh, conference in Orlando, uh, which will cul- culminate in the, uh, the, the actually the first full week of March. So we're looking at, um, we're talking to, with Pastor Langford. He's got so much going on. His schedule is so demanding. But what we'd like to do is something similar to what we did a couple of years ago, and that's a series of uh, programs because he's got so much to offer. And I, you, you, your your request, per, previous request, did not fall on deaf ears. We've been working very diligent, uh, you know, to to get things structured properly. Well, thank you. I know I wasn't speaking just for myself. I know that there's a lot of people that really look to this program and to the people on the program for not just information, but relationship, spiritual development. And the program has really meant a lot to me. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. I mean, that, that means a lot to hear that from from you. And that element that Pastor Langford offers, my goodness, uh, where can you find that, you know? So, but uh, stay tuned because we're working diligently to, to bring that forth for you. Oh, good. Well, thank you. I just... I thought you were working on it, but I just thought, well, I'm going to call in because I'm I'm free right now, and I just enjoy the program and listening to everybody, and and I just love the family aspect because yes, I do feel I I emailed Stan the week of his birthday and said happy birthday, Stan. <laughs> so. You know, it just it, that just makes me smile because. You think about this, and 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 I remember listening to Stan Deo early days, Art Bell, and and the, the the level of respect that that I had for Stan have for Stan, but had back then, and same with Steve Quayle and others. And now, you know, as time has gone on, now to see that, yeah, we're all a big family, we're all working toward the same goals, and that that family aspect is so important to all of us. It really is. Well, thank you, and and thank you for all you're doing. So, well, thank you. We're doing it. Uh, we're all doing. We're all in this together, and we appreciate your time. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. God bless thank you. you. Wow. You have a great night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go to area code nine seven zero nine seven zero. We're coming to you. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Is this me? <laughs> That is you. Uh, yeah, I'm calling. Oh, that's great, brothers. Uh, Lord bless you and keep you. I'm just so pleased uh, with what your ministry is doing for the children of the Father. And uh, I just can't. I, I, I'm kind of a new addition to the family. I was share, uh, Brother in Christ shared me shared your uh, website with me a while back, and I've been listening diligently, and I'm very much blessed by everything that you and uh, that you, Doug and Joe and uh, Stan and Steve and Tom and all the other brothers that you have on there. This is all extremely important for people to hear. And I'm quite heartbroken about the state of the quote unquote churches in the world and in this country, especially uh, the, you know, the scripture says that the traditions of men have made the word of God of no effect. And uh, I prefer to be referred to as a follower of the way because uh, the Lord Yeshua said that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father but by him, and that he is the living word. And as was expressed earlier, what Stan said about the fact that, you know, from beginning to end, it's all there, and it's been laid out for us. 
and uh, my <clears throat> particular calling right now, the Lord has called me to leave off of my business and serve him for the time is short. And, wow. Uh, I just wanted to be able to express, express my appreciation for you folks, and uh, I don't want to take a lot of the time here because there's other people that want to do the same thing that I'm doing, and I just bless you in, in Yeshua's name, and uh, I, I pray a hedge of protection around you every day, each and every one, and all of the brothers that come on there, because I know that we are all, all of us that serve the Father are at risk of, from the enemy, and we need to be there for each other, and hold each other up before the throne, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of every need. So, Amen. I'm really well, appreciative a lot said. of the fact that I was able to get yeah. Well, well, we we appreciate so, having you. Call. Just, Thanks so much. Th- thank you. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I did send you a little meager tithes and offering here from Colorado here a while back, and I'll try to do more. I don't have great resources, but uh, as I'm led, I am sharing those resources with each and every one. That, well, uh, well, come well, God bless my you. heart. And any support, monetary yeah. prayer, prayer sharing is, the word about the yeah. show uh, is so much appreciated. We can't thank you guys yeah. enough for all you do, and yeah. we we appreciate it. Well, you are you are much you are much loved, and uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you each and every one, and grace and peace be on your house. God bless, God bless you, you. Same to you. May the Lord be with you, and, and have a good night. Thanks for calling. Uh, Joe, yeah, um, yeah. This is Michael. Just so you know, I'm in West, Michael, Western Colorado. Michael from Western yep. Colorado. We uh, we have sure. your we have you down here, and uh, we hope to uh, hear from you again. All right, brother. I'm gonna cut you loose. We got a bad right, echo going yeah. here. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Joe, uh, yeah, man. There we some feet wow. There. There were, yeah, indeed. Um, I I, I want to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, p- please listen carefully if you don't mind. Um, and Steve Quayle had sent me this. You know Jeremiah Farrell. Uh, he's all right, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Farrell. Farrell. Yes, uh, Jeremiah Farrell, the Remind gentleman me. going into uh, Iraq, uh, working to save the people, uh, bringing supplies into Iraq. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sent Steve Quayle an email, and you can you can find this off of Steve Quayle alerts, I believe. Jeremiah Farrell sent Steve Quayle an email, and Steve asked me to read this on air. Uh, it was sent today. Uh, this is from Jeremiah Farrell. The subject is a quick update. Jeremiah Farrell writes, We made it safely and have started uh, plans to work uh, with the Peshmerga and have done our first aid clinic for refugees. God is good. But listen to this. Unfortunately, it took a week to get here instead of the two days it should have. Airline booking issues plagued us the entire trip. Finally, what topped it off, what really topped it off, was was the government authorities confiscating about $50,000 worth of our equipment we plan to use to assist in helping the Peshmerga and refugees. They detained us for six hours, causing us to miss one flight after another, after another, after another, and then released us and said we broke no laws, but that our equipment would not be released to us in time to leave with us. And parenthetically, he writes it would supposedly be mailed back home a few weeks later. And he writes, continuing, they tried to convince us not to go many times, but we were not deterred. They're saying, oh, it's too dangerous. You can't, you, what are you doing? What are you thinking? This is Department of Homeland Security and the TSA, as well as other international authorities. And he closes by saying this. Needless to say, the enemy does not want us here and does not want us to spread the light in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. God is sovereign above all of this. Your prayers are welcome and needed for favor, guidance, wisdom, protection, and divine health and rest. Thank you, Steve. Bless you. 
And this is, again, from Jeremiah Farrell. Folks, you've heard him on this program. He does so much work. And I'll say this to Michael from Western Colorado and others. You know, um, we're just conduits, you know, and and, um, we've been, well, I'm not even going to go there. If it's in your hearts, I mean, you talk about a very worthy cause to support. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Farrell's a real deal. Man, getting, getting I mean, going into harm's way, putting himself in other godlike men, and I mean, godlike men, I'm sorry, other men of God in harm's way. You, you know, he's doing, he's doing the Lord's work, saving untold numbers of Christians and people in harm's way in Iraq. What what a great what a great uh, service he provides, Jeremiah Farrell. If you want to know how you can help him, just send Steve Quayle an email. That's all you got to do. Steve seven 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 at stevequayle dot com, and, and Steve will make sure that any financial assistance, any medical assistance, or supplies or whatever, will get right to him. But that's the update from Jeremiah Farrell. And tomorrow night, folks, Steve Quayle will be on with uh, Tim Alberino. I've got to tell you, tomorrow night, Stargates, Pyramids, Giants, and Atlantis. Be prepared. I miss all the fun. I know, you know. Well, you you can I will through be. your drug induced uh, <laughs> haze in in that in that. I uh, think I'll be very alert and at home uh, yeah, well, awake by that time. So. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you know, just just listen, uh, uh, recover, but listen, it's going to be great. Uh, once again, Stargates, Pyramids, Giants, and Atlantis. Uh, he's there's going to be an announcement made tomorrow night. You're not going to want to miss. I guess I won't then. All right, let's go back to the phones. We're going to go to area code three zero three. I believe this is Colorado. Three zero three, you're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Yeah, hi Doug and Joe. This is Bill. Um, hey Bill. First of all, uh, if y'all would, let's just lift Jeremiah up. Lord, we just lift Jeremiah up right now. We open the path. We open the doorway for him and his team to have a complete, safe trip. Just open the doors right now and just move him in a powerful way. Protect him and let your spirit rest upon him. Let the spirit of the Almighty God surround him with that complete armor of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, brother. Man, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I I was waiting. I I just wanted this is not an infomercial, but Jeannie, our precious sister with that awesome coffee. <laughs> oh my goodness. I I I feel uh, well, I don't feel guilty. I've given that to the Lord. I ordered some uh toffee from her. It was a special order cuz I had to have some sent one place and a two pound slab sent to me. And uh, so when the other, the, the heart got to my friend, it got there right on, uh, you know, Valentine's day, she called me up and she was just raving and ranting. She said, what are you doing? Sending me this stuff. She says, I'm on a diet. She <laughs> says, and I'm gorging myself. I said, well, just pace yourself. So, and then the other, not an infomercial, but chance. Praise God for that brother. Okay. I called him. I've made a couple orders with him. And we we just have so much time fellowshipping that it's hard to get the order in, you know? And finally, you know, it's like, well, wait, Chance, let's make sure. Let's do a double check on this. He's okay. We got this, 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 and this. I said, well, check. Good. We're all right. He's okay. So your order's in. And then we talk. But at any rate, it's it's just, you know, just as a, unsolicited testimonial those two i don't know about all the rest of them but if all the rest of your folks are like genie and chance i mean th- these are top notch you know and oh, uh, and they the are. products are awesome yeah yeah, so. yeah it, you know and and uh uh ted brewer uh with with his health masters uh top notch and our and our other sponsors yeah. through btr casper and pro flowers and nature box they're all top notch um yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's just fantastic, and and you know I I just want to say something when you were talking I I thought I thought of this, it's amazing how God brings together like-minded people or people to the right place. Steve Quayle says often, 
God makes better friends for each one of us than we can make for ourselves. And that is so true. And to follow that up, you know, God does remove people from our lives that, uh, you know, need to be removed uh, for advancement, for our salvation, and, and for, for other reasons as well. So isn't it great how, what, because we could never do this. There's no way we could do this ourselves. So I just want to I know. That. Well, also, I forgot Ted Brewer. <laughs> I got got one of his books, right? And uh, <laughs> I mean, I talked to his son, and I mean, I'm just sort of drooling over his book too. So, at any rate, but um, back to something Stan said. You know, he was he was talking. I've heard numerous of your folks. You know, that come on, and I mean, they're godly people, and they're saying, you know, God is going to be pouring out his spirit, you know? I mean, God is already pouring out his spirit, you know? And I would just encourage everybody that's listening, you know, just get under the, under the spigot, you know? And I remember one time the Lord spoke to me, he says, you know, he said, you'd get more of my spirit if you got your foot off the hose, you know? It's like (laughs) we're standing on the hose. It's the Lord saying, just get off the hose. I'll take care of it. You know, and that's uh, it. So that's it. I, I guess that that's that's all I have. But you know, well, so thank you, Th- thank but, you for your, yeah. your your words, your assessments, and we really appreciate that. And the the people around us, I mean, top notch is right. And our listening audience, thank you. You know, thank you for being part of that too. We certainly recognize this is much bigger than than any one of us. Yeah, well, and also, you know, if Chance or uh, Jeannie talks to you, just say, you know, it's Bill out at the way of peace, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. (laughs) Will do. Absolutely. All right, brother. Thanks Thanks for sharing. Okay, thanks. God bless you. God bless you, too. Have a good night. All right. Fantastic calls. Let's go to area code 513 next. 513, we're coming to you now. Live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hi there. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm so excited to get in um, and talk to you folks. A um, couple things I wanted to tell you. Um, Pastor Langford um, and Steve Quayle on January the 31st were awesome. Whenever I listened to that program, the last part of it, when talking about communion, I just ball. It's just it's just awesome the way he explains that. And um also the lady in Buffalo yes. um she was dynamite. She was oh. just dynamite. She was a, such a blessing to me. And I hope we hear more from her. Um you can she count has on a that. crying also. Oh yeah, good. You, you, you good. can count on that. God bless yeah, you. I'm glad to she, hear that. She uh, she has quite a story to tell, and uh, I know Chance had spoken with her at length, and we Joe and I both have as well. She's got quite a story to tell. If, if people only knew uh, what she's gone through, it's just an incredible story, and we just heard just a sliver of it. So mm-hmm. um, she'll be back. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah, she has the Holy Spirit working with her, um, through her. It, it just, it was dynamic. It was just dynamic. Um, also, I wanted to um, tell you that um, I am starting to tithe now. I just find, just found you guys um, uh, late last summer and been growing so much in the Lord through your program and through your um, guest. And I thought, you're feeding me. I'm going to feed you. So I'm starting wow, to tithe. thank you. Uh, well, well, thank so, you. Not- it, you know, it, it's it's people. Look, I'll just say thank you. I, that, that's all. Just thank you, thank you. Well, mm. you guys are wonderful. Like I said, I've grown so much uh, from listening to your your program and your guest. And I want to put a petition out there for all the other listeners to please just donate a dollar a month. If all the listeners donated just one dollar, imagine what the um, blessing would be for all of us. 
not only you folks, but for all of us. Wow, and, uh, that's amazing, yeah. I mean, just, you know, you know a stamp and a dollar bill every <laughs> month. That's not much. No, no, it's not. And, and you know... Uh, one thing, and I just want to make this clear, one thing we do attempt to do, uh, and I think we do a pretty good job of this, and, and I, I talked to Steve, and I talked to Pastor Langford, I, I, we do seek counsel, because one thing we never want to do is be improper stewards, and uh, we, we want to be very responsible, and if we, and we do, um w- well, at the risk of sounding uh, self-serving, the statement sounding self-serving, we do uh, help others as well. And I'll just leave it at that. You know, it's, it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, we, we do act as conduits for uh, others. And we'll just leave it at that. So, you know, thank you. Well, me. that's biblical. Um, you're welcome, sir. It's biblical um, to tithe. And then not only do we tithe to the church or to your organization, but you ties to others. It's just, uh, it's just all this giving and and helping and growing. And um, I think if you know every every listener could send you a dollar every month, my, I, you have to have so many listeners out there. And if we could all pull together for you, it, it's not, it's not an exorbitant amount, but it is an amount that I think that could uh, make a difference for you. And um, I hope people yeah. start doing it. Well, thank you, dear. Thank you so much, ma'am. I you're mean, so really. Welcome. God bless oh, you're you. So I'm, welcome. And I'm so glad that you've, you know, we're. I'm, gl- I'm so glad you f- you find us that we're, you know, feeding a need, and that's all we want to do. We want to make a difference, mm-hmm. and uh, that's it. You know, Joe. I mean, that's it. Well, well, thanks so much for your call. God bless, ma'am. Can I ask you one more question? Sure. What's up? Okay. Um, what is the spelling on the um, name of that general that she spoke of, you and Stan spoke of? He's uh, the Iranian general that could possibly be the um, Antichrist. Um, I would like to look that up and research that more. Could you spell his name for me, please? Sure. It's uh, it's Qasem Soleimani. It's Q-A-S-S-E-M, like Mary. Once uh-huh. again, that's Kassem, uh, Q-A-S-S-E-M. And the last name is spelled S-U-L. That's S-U-L-E-I-M-A-N-I. Kassem Suleimani. Boy, and, I was way off. Okay. Yeah, it, it's okay. it's a very difficult name to, uh, to remember. What I'll do for those, and that's a good idea. Uh, what I'll do, which will, and this will remain there throughout the uh, until tomorrow, I will put his name under the show images at Hagman and Hagman dot com, and just a link to his Wikipedia page. Um, it's, that's not an endorsement of Wikipedia; it's just simply sure. a place, to, you know, a place to go. Okay. But I'm glad you reminded me of that. Uh, that's good. In fact, it'll be up there here shortly. So, very good. Thank All you. Right. And. Wishing the best for Joe tomorrow. Yeah, the hand of the Lord are. on him. Yes, it will thank be. you very much. Okay. Oh, you're so, so welcome. God bless you both. Thank you for All taking right. my call. Sure. God now. bless you too. Have a good night. All right. All right. Just such terrific callers, and we're going to keep plugging away here. We're going to go to area code two one zero two one zero. You're up next. You're live on the Hagen and Hagen Report. Hi, two one. Hi, this is Duane. Um, uh, you hear me fine? Yeah, yeah we, what we was do. your name again? Dwayne, right? Dwayne. Dwayne, yeah. I uh I I I called twice so far. Tell me about my uh my uh web page about uh Dark Horse and Katy Perry. Yeah. Um, I had a chance yes. to look at it. Yes. Okay, yes. on the fourth on the fourth page I put um I put up a, a bunch of videos that I've been working on for two years, I've been working on these videos. Some of them I have been, and uh, well, one of them is is the uh, is the uh, Super Bowl last year. And I'm not. I literally took way too much time on that, so I'm not going to even bother with this Super Bowl. But anyway, check out those videos. I just wanted to let you know. And, and uh, tell us your website again for the people, the the listeners who don't know what it is. 
double double unto her dot com. D O U B L E. Double under her dot com. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All um, right. Oh, Ooh, uh, last, we, last time I last time. I, go ahead. Oh, last time I uh, called, I said I I said something uh, that like like uh, I uh, like that that you know that most prophecy experts have most pretty much everything wrong, and I said, well, and you said, well, what makes me right is what your your response was, which is a pretty good. Uh, thing and I, 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 re- I refer to Derek Prince. Derek Prince, I usually when you watch all his videos, I, I watch all his videos. He'll he he'll very rarely get into prophecy, and and sometimes he'll give an ex- explanation. He says, you know, I just don't understand it, and <laughs> or, or a lot of it. He, he says he doesn't understand. He does actually talk a little bit about prophecy, but um, and and he gives a reason. He says. You know, I have prophecy experts coming to me all the time, and you know, and I say the same thing to every single one of them. He says, uh, "I don't, I don't trust none of you. I don't believe what any of you say because none of you all can agree with each other." So it's not no, that's that true. it's not that, <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah. So it's not that um, I'm the only one right. It's like none of us are. Well, I feel I'm right. Of course, we all feel we're the one that's right. It's like if you really understand prophecy good enough, you can find out that pretty much every single body, every single person who says they're like an expert, they're off into their own field, own left field. You know, we're all off into our own almost little world or whatever. And, well, somebody's right. One of us is right, is my point. Very good. Appreciate your call, and you're exactly correct. Thank you so much for your call. And, and uh, folks, I'll just say this: you know, it, it, it's like we started our program to begin with, uh, talking about the wonderful package that that we received from uh, from uh, Leanne and her family, and three wooden letters. Think about this: getting those three wooden letters and, and very decorative, very ornate, very nice, and putting it here um, at our offices and uh, putting them out and I'm looking at them and I'm looking at the word mom, M-O-M, and thinking, man, you know, uh, wow. First of all, I, I was just wondering that, wondering about it, why, you know, why? And and I was really, if you want to make an analogy, I was convinced I was looking at mom, M-O-M. And it wasn't until Joe came by and changed the positioning of the letters just with one movement of his hand to spell out the word wow. We were both looking at the same item, different perspectives. I, I might have argued to argued for quite a while. It's mom. He saw something different. It was wow. Mm-hmm. So, I think there's a lesson to be learned there, right? Absolutely. Uh, we all see things different. Our past experiences, uh, what we've been taught, what we think we know to be true, yeah. or our paradigm shapes the way we see things. That's right. That's and we have to get out of that paradigm and see things the way the Lord wants us to see things His way. And there's only one way, one correct way. As the last caller said, you know, um, the disagreement between all the people was why Derek Prince uh, didn't, uh, one of the reasons he said he didn't listen to a lot of the prophecy people is because they didn't agree with each other. Well, you know, that's Derek Prince, and he's uh, uh, somebody who, you know, somebody sent us a few books of his that I've read that were very, very good, and his YouTube teachings are good. Uh, At the same time, to me, prophecy is something very important. It's what we see playing out before us. And, you know, we don't try to fit current events into the prophetic uh, timeline to make them interchangeable, per se, but it is a very important aspect of uh, what we know is coming and, and how to discern the seasons. But beyond prophecy, the personal relationship with, with the Lord is, is 
first and foremost, should be the most interesting, most time-consuming, and uh, hardest walk that, that you go through in life. Hardest learning lessons come from a closer walk with the Lord because He purges the things away from you through trials and, and tribulations. And the more trials and tribulations you go through, the more things are tried from you and purged from you. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important. Let's take a call here, 480. I believe this is in uh, Phoenix area, 480 from Arizona. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Very well. What's on your mind? We just, we just wanted to send out positive prayers and wishes tonight from Kevin and Pam. To Joe for tomorrow, we hope. And uh, we're sending our good prayers and thoughts your way, Joe. And uh, thank you. You're going to be okay because you're you're uh, you're surrounded by love and good thoughts, and you will heal quickly and well. And we wish you guys uh, success and uh, and everything um, that you do. And uh, we can't make it to or- Orlando, I think it is that you're going to. But yes, we were uh, wondering. We heard that we could get um, a copy. Um, download or something of the show, um, and uh, you can get a download of, of of the conference. You can buy a download of it or something. I, I heard. Uh, yeah, I was, I wondered well, if you knew anything about that. You can go to Hagman and Hagman dot com, and or Prophecy okay. in the in the News dot com. But if you go to our website Hagman okay. and Hagman dot com, uh, there's an icon there, uh, Orlando Prophecy Summit. You click on that link. Okay. Or go to prophecyinthenews.com. You'll see there is a uh, offer, and it's the first article on our website. Um, you can you click on that icon. It'll give you the schedule, the people speaking. Um, the bottom of the article says more information here. You click on that. It'll take you to the Prophecy in the News. There you can buy uh, a full access pass for $50 that you will get li- uh, live streaming during and after the show. And you can have it directly streamed to your tablet, your PC, wherever uh, you have a device that can view um, a live streaming uh, link. And this link is accessible for, uh, I think for uh, last year's link, still accessible, if I remember properly. Um, but $50, full access pass. Uh, you won't get everything that you'll get in a DVD. There will be a, a subsequent DVD after the uh, conference is over and they put that together. But um, this is the next best thing to the DVD. You get it in real time, and you can watch it afterwards and archive as much as you'd like. Yep. Okay. All right. That um, super. Uh, and we were um, at the Columbus uh, conference, and we got uh, the DVDs for that. We haven't had a chance to look at them yet, but we're going to. Uh, but I also wanted to say that uh, we listened to the stand. Well, yeah, stand day. I think it was today, right? And uh, right. Russ, when Russ was on, um, I got his book at the conference up there in um, Ohio, and uh, I was reading through some of that uh, when you guys were talking, and was getting a lot out of it. And, um, well, anyway, I'm rambling on, and you want to say something? Well, no, it's, it's a great book. Yeah, it is a great book. Yeah, um, fantastic. Uh, we, you guys were talking with Stan today about the the events unfolding. Um, uh, and the quickening of the times, and I was looking out the window of our RV here in Arizona, and uh, there are there's been lights in the sky um, that uh, are interesting, and I just wonder if other callers uh, or other other people have noticed look have looked up and noticed um, um, anything like that. Um, we'll put that we'll put that thing. out there. Yeah, we'll put, we'll put that out there. Have, um, um, in, in fact, you know, time is running a little bit short uh, for tonight's program. But if anyone has seen any lights in the sky that uh, they want to comment on or feel are important, yeah, send them our way. You can go to HagmanHagman.com. Fill out the contact form. Report: There was a, uh, a lights in Japan, uh, firing lights in the sky in Japan, also across New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Reported last night, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, uh, um, Pamela's here, and she says you guys are the best, and we know that because you are. Uh, um, oh, okay. One other thing, um, the armor of God. Okay, um, 
uh, we have to uh, let all the remnant of the, the saved um, people know that, that if we all get together uh, in our faith in Christ and put on the armor of God, that we can overcome darkness. And uh, there's got to be a, 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 a way to get that out to more um, of, of the um, of the viewers, yeah, and the listeners. Um, and um, if, I don't know if, if uh, you might have any ideas on that, but um, uh, I, I heard that um, statement from uh, one of the pastors on um, Blog Talk Radio, one of the programs that, that said uh, if all of the people in Christ uh, had their armor of God on and proclaimed their divinity, that we could stamp out the darkness because it's the light that shatters the darkness. And um, um, oh, if you feel strong about that in your heart? Yeah. yeah. In other words, yeah. For, okay. yeah the, as opposed to divinity, which, yeah, if, if we, see, we, we've got the authority. It, it, the authority's been given to us. We just haven't used it. And you're, you're exactly right. Let's lock arms, either, uh, either uh, physically or at least across the miles, and let's band together and, and fight the darkness. Yes. Uh, and, um, and maybe there's a, a website, maybe um, that could um, be started to um, for those people um, in that um, of that mindset of the, of the that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear to um, go to that uh, site or to get that message and kind of come together as one um, and and focus our energy and our love and our prayers and our thoughts and in that direction, you know, that's just kind of what I've been thinking about. And just wanted to say that, and I uh, love you guys. You're the greatest, and um, uh, it's almost time to go and yep. uh, have a good night. Well, <laughs> well, thank you, and thanks, Pam. God bless you both. Thanks for listening. Yeah, you guys have a great night. Yeah, and that's kind of, Joe, that's what, kind of what the uh, object of HH Connections is through John and, and Chance and Jeannie and others, you know, part of it's our a family. Fellowship initiative. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, it's... it's and, and to think that if in two weeks, what was it, 12 or 14 countries in all 50 states have already reached out and said hello? I mean, Yeah, it's it's amazing. And all you have to do is just kind of put as much information as you want, to, you know, name and call. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. You don't have to... Just wherever you feel comfortable with. Um, if you want to put a telephone number there, John... Jeannie or Chance can can reach out to you and make you know make them make yeah an you said a, a five to seven day turnaround time with yeah. with getting back to people and uh, anybody who uh, sent an email to them if you have extra time on your hands and would like to be there to uh, fellowship to other people yeah uh, who are calling in and needing reach out to uh, I know me and my dad will be doing some of that when we get back from Florida we'll be volunteering some of our time and uh, all the people from American Survival Wholesale Chance. Um, John and Jeannie that have got this started, you know, God bless them. Thank you so much for what you guys are doing. It's uh, making a huge impact with people, and it's needed now more than ever. And I just want to thank everyone. Uh, tomorrow, as as Joe mentioned, or as we mentioned, Joe is not going to be in the office uh, tomorrow. He's going to um, be uh, have some surgery done. He should be home tomorrow night, barring any be. complications. Tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow, well, yeah. And uh, uh, we, you know, our prayers and thoughts are with him. But you know, he's a he's a tough dude. Okay, uh, I didn't raise any wimps. Right, I'm just gonna tell you that flat out. I didn't raise any wimps. So, uh, but but certainly, Joe, we wish you well. And uh, well, you know, we'll you. be we'll be doing doing this. Uh, but so we're gonna be miss you tomorrow night when uh, Steve Quayle and. Uh, Timothy Elberino. They'll be talking about the Stargates and Atlantis. Oh, tomorrow's night show: Stargates, Pyramids, Giants, and Atlantis. Let's check our site later tonight, early tomorrow morning. And by the way, I misspelled. There are variations of the spelling of that man's name. It's on HagmanHagman.com, right underneath the show images. There's uh, a couple of different spelling variations, but it's there. Link to his Wikipedia page. Say what you will. Tomorrow night, Steve Quayle, Tim Alberino. Thursday night, Jonathan Kahn. Friday night, Dan Goodwin. Can't wait to see you here for the rest of the week. God bless and have a good night.